Hello? Should be good to start now. I am going to adjust something on my end though, because the audio is... Rebooting. Rebooting. We'll see how the uh, computer takes this, but uh, it should be 60 FPS. It's looking smooth over here. Looks good. Well, cover your mouth. Uh, we got Lantern Right. Uh, we got Test Run for Alhatham, which I still haven't done. We got a new desert area. We got some stuff. So I've been moving. Me and uh, Sapphire have been moving the past uh, week and a half-ish. And uh, we're finally in the new apartment, and we have a slightly boosted internet speed. But as I suspected, um, there's another hurdle to overcome to get good quality and frame rates, which is the uh, the PC itself. And uh, it's still slow. But we're able to get 60 FPS at the moment, as long as there's no crackles or anything like that, it should at least look smoother um, if you're okay with the 720. You are doing some occasional crackles, you said? Yeah, it's not hard. Hmm. You heard On my mic, specifically? Yeah. Every journey has its final day. Don't rush. Yeah, I wonder what that is. Haven't you heard? There's a strange wanderer in your Um wait, no, quests. Nope, that's not what I clicked. Quests. This seems to be Al Hatham's story quest. Okay, so it's this one. Yeah, what is this one? Captain of Sumeru Adventures Guild seems to be looking for you. That must be to explore the new area. So there's Al Hatham, there's the Lantern Rite, and then there's the new desert area. Okay. I can go to Leeway, finally. Been avoiding this place during the event, so I wouldn't get any cutscenes. Loading. Will I still have music? <gasps> wow, I didn't take two steps before cutscene hits. I'm glad I never teleported here. Hi, my boots. We go say hi to Xiangling first. But? Huh? Xiangling? What a pleasant surprise meeting you here. I'm always here. <laughs> oh, why the pleasure is all mine. As is the surprise, surely. It must be fate that brings us together in this place. How have you fared as of late? Things have been going... All right. Setbacks are inevitable over the course of a long journey. If you wish to share what's troubling you, allow me to lend my ear. There is no need to shoulder all burdens by yourself. Thank you, Zhongwei. You are too kind. So, Zhongwei, are you here to listen to stories over tea again? I had originally planned to set out after this last round of tea. 
However... However? I had planned to take a walk to Chingsa village and gather some nascent bamboo shoots, which are currently in season. A villager there once gave me a small sample, and they possessed a most excellent flavor. Huh? Nascent bamboo shoots? Why can't you just use normal bamboo shoots instead? Hey, Paimon knows! Because Zhang Li prefers the finer things in life, right? Okay, Mr. Particular, let me guess! Ahem. The nascent bamboo shoot has a uniquely tender texture and a delicate sweet taste that its normal cousin cannot match. <laughs> An astute observation, Paimon. You know me well indeed. Lantern Right is almost upon us, but besides the bamboo shoots, there are a few other items I have not yet procured from Director Hu's list. May I ask if you have already made arrangements for the days ahead? Give me just one second, because I forgot to turn off the fan. Just in case there's any like wind going like you know the mic. Uh well, we were planning to use the opportunity to say hi to some of our friends, but before we were able to figure out a schedule, we ran into you. Well then, might I invite you to imagine the sheer delight that is a soup cooked with the freshest nascent bamboo shoots in all the land. Generous cuts of pork belly and crisp, fragrant bamboo shoots placed together in the pot and left to simmer slowly for half a day. I'm already drooling. Uh, you're doing this on purpose, aren't you? Paimon's on to your plan. You just want to hoodwink us into fetching your bamboo for you. <laughs> Her eyes are... Hmm? Why, I assure you, I would do no such thing. I merely wish to inform you of the freshest, most succulent and flavorful bamboo shoots one could ever hope to taste. You... <laughs> Let's go, Traveler. Paimon's taste buds can't take it anymore. Ready to go when you are. Collecting a few bamboo shoots shouldn't take too long. Paimon has got to get her hands on some of that soup. Such fine specimens are indeed well worth the excursion. Very well. I shall leave the bamboo shoots to you. Should you have the good fortune to find some, please share them with me as well. See? See? Paimon knew he was just bamboozling us. Oh, I get it. However, there is no need to rush. The streets of Liu will be bustling with visitors and filled with all manner of celebrations during the festive period. By all means, go wherever your interests lead you. The nascent bamboo shoots would be but a wonderful final touch to a most exceptional feast. What an honor it would be to savor them in the company of friends. I understand. We'll check in with you later at the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor. We're heading out. Enjoy your walk, young Lee. <laughs> Take care now, you two. Oh! Two Xiong Lees! My precious, precious Mersion. Okay. Way over that way. Way over that way. I remember on one of those world quests, you'd find Zhang Ling here picking bamboo shoots. Bamboo shoot. Excuse me. Bamboo shoot. Nascent bamboo shoot. Uh... Oh, this one's only just sprouted, and it looks super fresh. Paimon thinks this is the one. Oh, I can't pick these. These are special. Also, that boar Help. fucking. Help! Did you hear that? Someone's calling for help! It's coming from over there! Okay. Are you okay? Did any water go down the wrong pipe? 
<coughs> I... I think I'm okay now. Thank you so much. That was scary. Well, at least you're all right. All thanks to your savior here. Oh, a little girl? Greetings, everyone. My name is Yao Yao. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Whoa, she's so well-mannered. My name's Paimon, and this is the Traveler. Greetings. I'm Dvorak, a musician from Fontaine. Dvorak? Okay. Where's the Zha coming from? Dvor? Ak. But there's a Jack and the Zha in there. I came through Stone Gate, intending to head towards Li Yue Harbor, but then I became captivated by the beautiful scenery, and before long, I was completely lost. Just now, I was so mesmerized by the waterfall that I slipped and fell into the water. If it weren't for Miss Yao Yao's help, I shudder to think what might have happened. Give me a sec. I just need to make sure that my stream is actually at the, the frame rate it should be. Dvorak. The splashing around the bottom of the waterfall means the stone path is always wet and slippy. You definitely have to be careful. Next time you're exploring an unfamiliar environment, try to focus on what's right in front of you. Don't let your mind wander. As long as you watch your step, accidents like this won't happen anymore. Yes, ma'am. I understand. Yes, ma'am. I'll remember to be more careful next time. Are you hungry, sir? Oh, uh, I'll be fine. <laughs> Please, sir, it's quite all right. I was born and raised here in Liyue. It's only natural for me to extend my hospitality to any guests who are passing through. I expect you still have quite a long journey ahead of you. It's very important to keep your energy levels up. I still have some lotus flower crisps left in my backpack, why don't we split them between the four of us? We're good. We actually have like an entire like I don't know, like a banquet or two in our backpack. Aww, what a thoughtful kid! She even has some for Paimon. <laughs> You're welcome. Yep, you enjoyed the crisps. Mm, so tasty. If only there were more. More? You already had the Sumter Beast chair. Having a healthy appetite is a good thing. It means Paimon's still growing. If I'd known I was going to run into you, I would have made a second batch. Hope you're taking notes, Traveler. This is how you treat your Paimon. Wow. What do you think, sir? Are Liyue's snacks to your taste? No, no, they're perfect. When I was traveling through Mondstadt, I had a chance to try one of their moon pies. It had a meat filling unlike these crisps. But apart from that, it seems like they follow a similar cooking process. Both are delicious in their own way. As for Fontaine's cooking, though... Uh, it's been a long time since I've had a taste of home. Sounds like you spend a lot of time on the road, huh? I do. It's part of my job. I'm one of the main organizers of the Iridescence Tour. Iridescence Tour? Sounds somewhat familiar. Doesn't ring a bell. The Iridescence Tour is one of the biggest music festivals in Fontaine. We're looking to expand, though. Our aim is to hold a festival in every nation. At least, all the main organizers share this goal. Unfortunately, it's a long story, so I'll spare you the details. But anyway, so the main reason I'm traveling all around to VAD is to promote our music festivals. But I have some personal reasons, too. Well, what are they? Just tell us already! Let me see. Well, to explain it in full, I'd have to start with a story from my ancestors. I don't want to take up too much of your time. Oh, I love listening to stories. Here we go. Mm-hmm. We want to hear it too. Okay. Then I'll start from the beginning. The story goes that my ancestor, who was also a traveler, once slipped and fell into a lake during his travels. As he was sinking and gasping for breath, he heard a wondrous tune in the air. In the water. 
They say it was the most beautiful, moving melody he had ever heard. Even in that life and death moment, the ethereal music seized his full attention and almost made him forget the fact that he was drowning. Shinyan talked about the tour in the summer event. The um, golden apple thing. When he finally came to, he found that he had already been brought ashore. Not too far from him stood an unfamiliar woman with an almost divine aura. I want some musical weapon, uh, musical weapons. Once she saw that he was no longer in danger, she left without a word. Like, give me a guitar sword. Give me like a, like a giant, uh, oh, I don't know what you would do for like a spear. I don't know, you could do like a harp catalyst. My ancestor tried to run after her to give his thanks, but although a mere dozen paces separated them, no matter how quickly he gave chase, he drew no closer and remained a dozen paces behind. In the end, all he could do was to bow in thanks to the woman as he watched her walk away towards the rivers and mountains in the distance, before at last he turned around and made his way home. Once he returned to Fontaine, he began to learn an instrument so that he could spread his story far and wide just like the Bards. After generations of retelling, embellishing, and dramatizing, people have come to think of that lady as something like a fairy. The story's become something of a local legend in Fontaine. It's called The Lady Overlooking the Lake. People now say that if you go down to the lakeside and play an instrument, so long as you play a pleasing melody, you will hear a fairy lady who is hiding out of sight playing along with you. It's a nice legend. At its heart is his true story. Exactly. It may just be a legend to others, but for me, it's a real part of my family history. I wanted to find out the truth of this tale. So I decided to retrace my ancestor's steps and search for that lady's modern day descendants. Of course, there's no way of knowing where my ancestor fell into the lake all those years ago. So I always knew that the search would be akin to looking for a needle in a haystack. I've spent many years on the road now, and I'm nowhere near as fit as I was in my youth. <sighs> the wish that I've spent half my life chasing after has now become something of an obsession. Well, I haven't lived half of my life yet, but still, I understand how you must feel. Paimon, too! It's like... Mm, imagine if you saved the center of a lotus flower crisp, which is the best part, by the way. Because you wanted to eat it another day, but then suddenly, swoosh, it falls into the water, never to be seen again. I <laughs> would definitely remember that for the rest of her life. Wow. <laughs> There's no need to feel sorry for me. I've made some progress over the years. For example, I've concluded that the story must have taken place in Liyue. Oh, so you finally found a lead? Yes, in fact, that's an intriguing story in and of itself. I'd always known that Mondstadt is the city of song and freedom. But more recently, I heard that the animal Archon returned to Mondstadt for a festival in the fall mm. and learned that he himself is a patron deity of music. Mm. So I prayed for the animal Archon's guidance in the Mondstadt Cathedral. And as soon as I set foot back outside the front gate, I noticed a cluster of leaves being blown in the wind further and further west towards Stone Gate. A friendly local told me that this meant the wind was guiding me in the direction of Liyue. So I followed their advice and made my way here. It settles it then. It was Liwe. Right? You get it. I knew I'd find someone that agrees with me eventually. Hmm. Are you sure? It sounds a bit too much like one of those fake legends told by those treasure hoarder guys to scam gullible grannies from Chingsa Village. Huh. Rex Lapis has returned to the world. Just give me some incense and a little more towards the travel fees, and I will pass your gift on to the Lord of Geo and ask him to keep you and your family safe and well, and so on and so on. Don't worry, Yao Yao. We, uh, we have a lot of experience with deciphering omens and stuff. Yeah. And anyway, you only got scammed if you handed over Mora, right? Actually, to express my gratitude, I did spend rather a lot of more on several bottles of fine wine, which I left at the Statues of the Seven along the way. Hmm. Oh dear. Well, how about this, ladies and gentlemen? 
Why don't I bring you all to Yujing Terrace to see Miss Ganyu? I don't know very many people, so I can't help you out much. But Miss Ganyu and the Qixing know just about everything. If you've been scammed, they'll help you get your Mara back. And if the wind was telling the truth, and you want to keep looking for that lady's family, they'll be the best people to ask. Does sound like a good idea. But you've already helped me so much. Yeah? Well, I was going to take some new medicinal herbs and plants I picked to Miss Ganyu anyway, so it's no trouble at all. You know what? It's been a minute since we saw Ganyu too. It should be nice to pay her a visit before Lantern, right? Then let's get moving. All right. Well, my sincere thanks to you all. I will never forget your kindness. Okay, everyone. Please follow me. <laughs> I'll be your guide. Remember to watch where you're going, okay? Uh-oh. Paimon's out of a job. Eh, oh, well. Paimon will just be a cheerleader instead. <laughs> Yeah, we'll just hold up. Now we can go, Louie. As soon as I pick up every single shiny that I see right before teleporting. Uh... Oh, we're going to the gate. Stream seems to be running fine as far as uh, visually. Yeah, it's definitely higher than 30. Which is good. But it's showing 60, so... As long as there's that... There's a dog here. Come along, dog. Wow. Liwe Harbor looks very different from when I came last. It's almost as if I'm listening to the same melody, but with a richer timbre and new variations added. Well, we are here during Lantern Ride, after all. It only comes once a year, so they always have a big celebration. And this is our third year. Oh, God. It's fair to say that this time of year is when Liyue Harbor looks the prettiest. Great. Let's go and check it out. I can't wait to get into the city and see it all up close for myself. The streets are breathtaking. Smiles and laughter everywhere I look. It's contagious. I can almost feel the music in the air. I have the urge to start waving my conductor's baton. This guy's guitar is too small for him. You're enjoying the city. By the way. Unless it's like a ukulele or something. Speaking of, nice surprise. speaking of guitars. Hello, Shenyan. Let me introduce some new friends. They are... Traveler Paimon and Mr. Dvorak, right? 
<laughs> I've known them all for quite a while. So you already know each other. <laughs> when I was last here to advertise a Li Wei stop for the Iridescence Tour, Xin Yen was one of the few people willing to give me the time of day. It feels like I've been chasing this Iridescence Tour bandwagon halfway around the world, but I keep getting stood up. What's going on, Mr. Dvorak? Uh, I'm, I'm so sorry, Xin Yen. We've had a string of terrible luck recently, and every time we've tried to put on a show, something or other has come up to stop our plans from materializing. I just want to see if that makes anything run better. Is that right? Hmm, I guess it can't be helped. So, what brings you to Leoy Harbor at this time of year, anyway? Thinking of putting on a music festival during the Lantern Rite celebrations? A Lantern Rite music festival? Yes, please! No, uh... I'm actually here on personal business this time. Oh, so no Lantern Rat Music Festival? I mean, that's not just up to me. Hosting a music festival takes a lot of funding and personnel. Moreover, I've never worked with the Leeway authorities before. Even if I were to start putting something together right now, I think it'd be too rushed. Wait, but we're going to meet the Leeway Qixing, aren't we? And they're the ones in charge. Uh-huh, that's right. Miss Kuching and Miss Ningguang can make anything happen. You mean... what? <laughs> this is the perfect opportunity! Well, sure, it might not work out, but it can't hurt to bring it up as a suggestion. Lantern Rite Music Festival would be a huge hit. That's the spirit! See, even the Traveler agrees with me. Mr. Dvorak, don't let yourself be put off by the fact that a few things haven't worked out recently. As for the performers, I can put you in touch with some local artists. My friend Yunjin is a well-known opera singer in Liyue. With her support and a commissioned song from the Yunhan Opera Troupe, we should be able to get something going. But what about you, Xinyan? Are you just going to sit this one out? <laughs> what do you take me for? Yeah. If we actually manage to make the Iridescence Tour Lantern Rock Grand Concert a reality, you think I'd let anyone else perform the opening act? Wow! There's that rock and roll spirit! <laughs> what do you say, Mr. Dvorak? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I'll give it a shot. Okay. <laughs> but the opening act is not something to be chosen lightly, Shinyan. I will judge your work by the strictest of standards, so please make sure you are fully prepared. Are you kidding? I thought you'd never ask! Whew, guess my shopping time's getting cut short! I'm gonna head back right away and start working on this. Yao Yao, if you run into your senior on the way to the Qixing, please send her my regards. Okay, I promise I will. Good luck with your music, Xinyan. You got this, Xinyan! So about the senior of yours, Xinyan mentioned yesterday. Is that anyone we know? Yes, it's Xiangling. She's mentioned you two before. Xiangling's always thinking about cooking. Whenever she gets scrapes or burns, she just leaves them to heal by themselves. She definitely needs someone around her to look after her. I know you must have looked out for her a lot too in the time you've known her. So, thank you for that. I would have teleported, but I think I would have uh, interrupted dialogue. You know how this game is. Hmm. This is a peaceful neighborhood. I mean, Madam Ping's going to be involved. Oh, it's Master. Is it okay if I go and say hi to her? Oh, calm down now, dear. I'm not about to run off anywhere. I'm not a bundle of energy like you. I haven't seen you in days, Master. I've missed you. Oh, bless you, Yao Yao. You do say the sweetest things. Ah, look who it is. Visiting friends during the Lantern Rite, are we? Greetings, Madame Ping. You're half right, Madame Ping. We were also trying to help out Mr. Dvorak over here. We were on our way to take him to see the Qixing. Uh, hello, ma'am. I am a musician from Fontaine and an organizer of the Iridescence Tour. I don't suppose you've heard of it. Master, Master! The Iridescence Tour is a super famous music festival! 
<laughs> An old lady like me wouldn't know much about that sort of thing. A music festival, you say? It sounds terribly exciting. If we could add some musical elements to Lantern Rite, we could organize a Lantern Rite music festival. And you know all about Leo's cultural traditions. Hearing your thoughts would definitely help us figure out how best to approach it. For example, do you think it might be a bit too modern, or is there any other issue? Why, not at all. Music pays homage to history and culture, and it can also be a bridge between different civilizations. Times change, and the music enjoyed by the youngsters of today is no doubt very different from the tunes I was accustomed to in my youth. <laughs> Nevertheless, all fine things in life can be appreciated. And so, I look forward to it immensely. Hear, hear. I do believe that, my own dear grandmother aside, you are the wisest old lady I've ever met. Oh, <laughs> goodness gracious. You're all being suspiciously sweet today. Yao Yao, whatever have you been feeding them? <laughs> Master, you're in such a great mood today. You're even cracking jokes with the rest of us. Oh, well. I'm sure you must have plenty to be getting on with, yes? Run along now. Don't let me hold you up. Thanks, Madam Ping. We'll see you again soon. You mustn't be afraid to try new things. If you never try... You'll never know. With your contribution, I'm sure this year's Lantern Rite will be a most spectacular one. Okay. <laughs> Dude, second, these things only bloom here more or less. It's gone, you! And when you meet with the Ministry of Civil Affairs, please remind them that the festivities are not an excuse to procrastinate their work. Understood, Miss Ganyu. I'll take my leave now. Yeah, do it. Got you! What brings you here, Yao Yao? I've brought all the medicine you asked me to pick for you. Oh, and here's a pack of sweet flower seeds as well. Medicine or also, food? Also, these dried chingshin leaves make a great pot of tea that's very good for you. I know you've had a lot to deal with at work recently, but you shouldn't push yourself too hard. If you're not careful, you'll end up falling asleep in the grass again. Well, this is weird. It's like a responsible younger sister talking to their disorganized older sister. Uh, ahem. Yeah? Uh, Paimon, you're running your mouth again. <laughs> Thank you, but Paimon's criticism is quite valid. I do have a tendency to neglect matters outside of work, and that's something I should improve on. Oh, my apologies. I don't believe we've been introduced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Paimon will do the honors. Paimon tells Ganyu all about Mr. Dvorak. Hmm. Well, what's wrong? Did Paimon go over everything a bit too fast? It's definitely an ambitious plan. If there's anything you didn't quite catch, Paimon's more than happy to go over it again. Huh. It may be... a little difficult to make this happen. Oh? Well, the Lantern Rite is the most important festival of the year. Our celebrations must not only be visually spectacular, but also appeal to the tastes of Leoa citizens from all walks of life. The Iridescence Tour is... relatively unknown in Leoa. It's difficult to predict how a brand new show will be received. It would be quite risky for us to bet everything on this one music festival. <sighs> All very valid points. I completely understand. 
Therefore, we will not replace or cancel any of our pre-existing program. However, I will submit a proposal requesting to put the Iridescence Tour special performance as the final act of this year's festivities. Some live music will certainly add to the festive atmosphere on the night of the Lantern Rite. As for the venue... Hmm... Let's reserve a space at the docks. So we're not stealing anyone's thunder. But we will end the night on the high note. Yes. My thoughts precisely. Now I just need to take some time to give this proposal some polish. As long as I clearly lay out the pros and cons, and highlight the key points of the proposal, given that Ping and the Traveler have both given the idea their blessing, I'm confident that Qixing will be sure to give it serious consideration. Mr. Dvorak, I will need to discuss with you the number of musicians who will be coming to Liyue, as well as their catering and accommodation requirements. Oh, yes, certainly. Let's step to the side and discuss further. As soon as there's work to do, Ganyu's as diligent as ever. I couldn't agree more. Master once said that everyone has things that they are good at and things that they are less good at. So, with that in mind, Ganyu shouldn't feel compelled to become perfect at absolutely everything. I'm good at taking care of people, so that can be left to me. Wow. Hey, Yo-Yo, can you take care of Paimon, too? Paimon's getting hungry again. Paimon, you're trying to freeload again. I'm afraid my backpack's empty now, but if you let me know what you like, I can bring you some of your favorite dishes next time we meet. Apart from lotus flower crisps, what else do you like? Anything sweet, and anything that's made from slime. With her and slimes. <laughs> Here's what I've drafted so far. Anything else you want to add? No, this is excellent. I'm rocking my brains, but I don't think you've missed a single thing. Perfect. Then we'll leave it as is. I'll go make an official copy. Oh, perfect timing. We were just wrapping up our discussion here. That was quick. Not at all. Every second counts for a complex proposal such as this. I will inform the Qixing of this development immediately. Please give me a moment to pass on the message. Yao Yao, thank you for bringing my herbs. I will make sure to take them. Remember to make tea from them first, Ganyu. You mustn't just chew them raw. <laughs> uh, I... I will. <laughs> okay, I should be getting back. If Yao Yao stays out for too long... Mom and Dad will be worried sick. The goat wants to chew the, the the plants. Everyone, I'm sure that the music festival will go off without a hitch, so don't worry. And in case I don't see you before, I wish you all a very happy lantern right. Thank you, Yao Yao. Happy lantern right to you, too. We should go get dinner together sometime! <laughs> You're right next to her. You were right next to her when you yelled that. That lady I just talked to, Ganyu? She really thinks of everything. It got me wondering. Could it be that all our failed attempts so far have been down to our failure to properly prepare for different contingencies? Mm. Stay put and wait for two hours. Jeez. Oh, After a short wait, Kuching and Ganyu arrive. Greetings, Traveler, Paimon, and Mr. Dvorak. Call me Kuching. Ganyu has brought me up to speed on everything. I'll get straight to the point. The Qixing have approved Ganyu's proposal. Over the next few days, I will be working with Mr. Dvorak on behalf of the Qixing to facilitate the organization of this concert. Yay! That's awesome! Unbelievably efficient. Kuching strikes again. <laughs> Please. The Qixing have a duty to deal with matters such as these. We have merely moved things forward to the next step. On a more personal note, I am an avid supporter of all things new and innovative. As such, it is my privilege to work with you on this exciting project. Thank you so much, Kuching. I'd become quite discouraged after our recent failures and was expecting the same outcome once again, so I didn't dare to get my hopes up. 
<sighs> Never in my wildest dreams could I have imagined this going so smoothly. It's like a dream come true. Right. Time for me to call in the performers. To stage a concert at a high-profile event like this is a rare opportunity. We'll make sure it's a night to remember. Yes! Our music band's finally getting fired up! Yes, indeed. I know exactly what I'm doing from here. For a musician, music will always be the language they are most fluent in. What about your ancestor? The, that fairy lady. Oh, that. Well, that can wait for another time. Oh. Can you? What's wrong? They told me all about Mr. Dvorak's situation, but I was so engrossed in drafting the proposal that I forgot all about it. Oh, that's quite all right. I, I don't even know what the person I'm trying to find looks like, so it was always going to be a long shot. Don't worry about me, Ganyu. Your time and energy are needed elsewhere. I, I'm sure you already have plenty to deal with between this concert and everything else going on during the Lantern Rite. Thanks. It was just that I had a few initial thoughts when I heard your story. For instance, I wonder if this lady your ancestor met might have been an adeptus. What do you think? It's definitely possible. To tell you the truth, Mr. Dvorak, I am somewhat related to the Adepti myself. I am part human and part Chilin. The Chilin is an illuminated beast. I know how important your quest to get in touch with your roots must be to you, because I've been there myself before, trying to find out where I belonged. Did you say the Adepti? And your illuminated beast? Part Chilin? Yeah, what's so what's uh, what's so crazy about that? Are you telling me all the rumors of the Liyue Adepti are real? So it's not just artistic license? You bet they're real. Trying to track them down is tough though. Like Julian Karst itself. There's nothing specifically stopping you from going there, but getting in and out of there is quite an ordeal. Yes. Anyway. If you're looking to uncover a lost melody, or shine light on a forgotten aspect of Leo's cultural history, I'm probably not the best person to ask. But if it's a person you're looking for, then I just might be able to help. I see. I think I understand the situation now. In that case, Ganyu, shall we divide the work between us? Yes, that was also my thought. Great. So Mr. Dvorak and I will concentrate on things here in the city to make sure the concert goes according to plan. In the meantime, Ganyu will reach out to our network and try to find the person he's looking for. How's your workload at the moment? Will you be able to make time? I can probably get through everything in two days, as long as I don't sleep. Wow. Wait, what do you mean as long as I don't sleep? Even for someone with illuminated beast blood in their veins, working for such an extended period without a break will take its toll on your health. Somehow that does not sound persuasive coming from Kuching. Be it but three moons from the start, he who returns is not he that departs. Hmm. Even I know the importance of maintaining a healthy work-life balance. In that case, three days. All right, I can work with that. If you have the time, would you join me for this search? You're well known to many of the Adepti and respected among the people. I'll feel much more at ease with your company. Of course. Okay, then let's meet back here in three days. Watch this space, Mr. Dvorak. We'll get to the bottom of this. You're all so helpful and kind. I, I really... I just... <sighs> just think. Imagine if we found the Adeptus Lady, or one of her descendants, and got them to come to the performance! Wouldn't that be amazing? It'd be such a happy reunion! And that's exactly what this festival's all about! I'm sure the wind that guided you here f feels the same way. You're right. Okay, I'm gonna pull out all the stops to make this Lantern Rite a true extravaganza. We should probably get going. Mr. Dvorak, could you come with me to confirm the site? The bark rock. What are your thoughts on music? What does it mean to you? Uh, music sounds nice. <laughs> Truth be told, the question of what music means to people is one that I've been pondering for quite some time. 
Let's revisit this question after the concert. We're children, we're children. Lady Yuhong. It's not my name. Baiwen, what is it? Per Lady Ningguang's orders, I've been gathering intelligence outside of the city with the goal of uncovering and dispatching any trouble ahead of the festival. I am told that a strange melody was heard somewhere along the coast. I was wary of investigating further on my own, so I was just on my way to report this incident to Lady Ningguang. But I'm worried that if we don't act right away, we may miss the window of opportunity to take appropriate action. I understand. <laughs> In that case, I... Well, let us handle this one. Yeah, Kuching. You're busy enough as it is. There's a ton of different things in the city that needs your attention. Leave it to us! Don't worry, whatever it is, we'll definitely be able to handle it. Uh, well, she will handle it. Hmm. With the Traveler on the case, it's as good as dealt with. Thank you. This will be a great help. I will inform Lady Ningguang about the situation. Once it's resolved, please come and find me again at Yujing Terrace and let me know. And say hi to Ningguang for us. You have my thanks too. Stay safe and come back as soon as you're finished. Good luck. She said she'll reach out to the Yunhan Opera Troupe. Huh. I see. Then I'll arrange for a rehearsal venue and accommodation as soon as possible. Everything should be ready tonight. Many thanks, Kaching. You know, I once heard someone from Liyue describe a person as swift as lightning and agile as the wind. At the time, I thought it was a curious expression, and I had a hard time piecing together a mental image of such a person. But now, having seen Kuching in action, I honestly can't think of any other way to describe it. It's such a vivid and expressive phrase, a testament to the richness of Liyue's culture. All right, head. All right, buddy. You're too kind, Mr. Dvorak. <laughs> Um, place by Jun Bowen Mention over here. Here, Super Sep, yeah. So, okay. <clears throat> coming from around here, right? Well, what's that flower doing down there? It's like causing bursts over and over. <laughs> like blooms. Constant blooms. But Diamond doesn't hear anything. There doesn't seem to be a soul in... I was just wondering who in their right mind would come out to a place like this. Oh! Uh, so, it's you two. The j Long. <laughs> Mommy is here. You look pretty alive to me. Can't have spooked you that bad. You, you, uh, fair enough. Know anything about the strange music? Ah, you're here for that too? Saves me a bit of explaining. Come with me. I've already reconned the perimeter, so we should be safe. Oh, gotcha. Dintro slime was being rained on and creating bloom over and over. Investigate clues. Uh. Okay. Hmm. The stuff by the door is in pretty good condition, though. It can't have been too long ago. 
ago that someone was last living here. Yeah, we're reading these out of order. This place is completely empty. There's nothing valuable left here at all. The doors and windows are all fine, so there definitely wasn't a break in. How strange. It looks like it's been looted, except for the fact that there's no sign of a struggle. The bad guys could have sneaked in while the owner was gone, but... Then how do you explain why the door and windows are intact? Seems you've done a pretty thorough inspection. So... Any theories on what might have happened here? Yaelon, you didn't hide some of the evidence from us on purpose, did you? Why would I make this more difficult for you? We're on the same side here. Okay, well... Paimon gives up then. <laughs> Paimon's got nothing. What about you? Give up as well? It's difficult to theorize with so little evidence. It must have something to do with that melody. Your instincts are pretty good. Hmm. Or perhaps it's not instinct. The strange melody is one of the few pieces of information you have available after all. Let me share a folk story with you. A long time ago... There used to be a group of bandits in the Liyue countryside who would sound a horn every time they were about to raid a village. But it wasn't a rallying cry to rouse their fellow men. It was a disconcerting tune, meant to intimidate the weak and warn them of their impending doom. To escape with their lives, the villagers would abandon their homes and flee overnight, taking only their most valuable belongings with them. Everything else was left behind. The bandits were eventually brought to justice, but the fear and trauma remained in the villagers' hearts. Whenever they heard that melody, they would feel like their lives were in danger once again, and flee immediately. The culprit of this crime exploited that very fear to get access to this house without having to force their way in. Hmm. <laughs> That's quite the story. The victims obviously will have gotten quite a fright, but at least they won't be in any great danger. The important thing now is to find this copycat criminal. If we use Elemental Sight, we could follow their tracks. On any other day, that'd probably be a good idea. Unfortunately, it's not gonna work today. <laughs> Why not? Take a look around and you'll see what I mean. This criminal is clearly well-versed both in using music to commit crimes and in making a clean getaway. Not only did they stay off the muddy road to avoid leaving footprints, it looks like they were also careful not to bring any gadgets with so much as a trace of elemental energy. Evidently, they were intent on keeping even the most experienced investigators off their trail. Unfortunately for them, I'm one of the best trackers in the business. They're not about to get away with their little scheme on my watch. So basically, if we want to find the culprit, we just need to follow you on. Let her do the work. Mm-hmm. As long as you can keep up. <laughs> a little late there. Since the culprit's trying to be cautious and low risk, I'll bet they left through an area with some vegetation for cover, but not so much that it would slow them down. Here, look at this. These tracks are superficial, but they definitely didn't occur naturally. Something heavy was being dragged this way, meaning we're headed in the right direction. Okay. Huh. Their pace has increased. Normally, people carrying a heavy load slow down as their journey goes on and they start to tire. Whatever's motivating them to speed up must be psychological. For instance, reaching the home stretch. Again, it's 
so close to lantern ride too. <laughs> Tis not the season for their antics. Tis not the season. Come on, let's round them up. Hello. Hello hey. there. Who are you? Where did you come from? Hmm. The evidence is conclusive. Okay. Confess and we'll go easy on you. My patience is running low, so why don't you do us both a favor, hmm? You kidding me? You think I'm scared of you? Perhaps not. But you should be. Do I get to play as yellow? Busted. T Take it easy. Quiet. Curses. Seems like you're not all talk after all. But there's no going back now. Better up my game. <laughs> you're open. Busted. He's fucking mercy. dead. Have mercy. I wanted to try it with my team, but that's fine. Oh, it's a little late for that. I've come this far. I might as well finish the job. I surrender. I surrender, please. I'll do whatever you say. Please have mercy. <laughs> Tell us everything. You have one chance. And I'm warning you. Don't make me ask twice. I won't. I swear. <laughs> um, you know, so... Lantern Rite's nearly here, and like a lot of people, I wanted to buy a few nice things. I know I'm with the treasure hoarders and everything, but I don't really have any kind of experience with robbing people and whatnot. So I, uh, I don't have the guts to break into somebody's house. Wow, you're really going to complain to us about that? No, not at all. <laughs> I'm just telling it how it is. Okay, continue. I racked my brains trying to think of what I could do. And eventually, I remembered something from back when I was a kid. The bandits would blow their horn, and my grandma would grab us kids and run. I remember the tune, so I... I figured I'd try it for myself. I mean, just to see what would happen. At first, anyway, I seriously didn't expect that family to pack up and leave. But they did. And they just left all their stuff right there for the taking. It was too easy. I just... I couldn't resist. It was completely wrong of me. I know that now. I'll return everything that I took. It's all still in perfect condition, and will be like it was never gone. Please, give me a chance, huh? Let me make it right. Give you a chance, huh? Sounds to me like you'd rather strike some kind of a deal than spend Lantern right behind bars. Y yes. Um, yes. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yes. <laughs> you know how to bargain. I'll give you that. It's just a pity that you didn't confess at the first opportunity. You'll have to take a walk with me. Once we've returned the goods, we'll find the owner of the house, and you can apologize to them in person. After that, I'll escort you to the Ministry of Civil Affairs. Yes, ma'am. You know, as a former victim of this kind of crime yourself, I doubt anyone understands the fear you inflicted quite as well as you do. Does your greed matter more to you than your fear? More to the point, if you can play a tune from memory, don't you think you should be capable of making an honest living? You mean... <laughs> That's enough hints for you. You'll have plenty of time to reflect on all of this yourself. There's not much left to wrap up, so I'll take it from here. Guess this is where I'll say goodbye. Well done, Yelon. Hmm. What is it? Is there something else? I'm still not sure how you first got your hands on this information. So play it safe when you get back. Don't mention to anyone that you ran into me out here. Hmm. You helped a lot with the investigation <gasps> and arrest anyway, so it's perfectly fair for you to get all the credit. Just take it. It works better for me, too. Whisper sweet nothings in my ear. See you when I see you. <laughs> and happy lantern right. What was that about? Yeah, I'm such a pro at this. 
With her taking it from here, it's as good as results. <laughs> She's getting right up in my business. You should take the credit. Ah, uh, okay. Whoosh. Random event, a strange melody complete. They know the art. <laughs> The audience is all, yeah, and she's coming back, and I, I, I'm gonna get her twice. Although it's kind of a shame that we never got that treasure hoarder guy to play the melody again. Why is it a shame? Cause Paimon's curious. That's why. It's like when you have a tune stuck in your head, but you don't even know what it is. It's driving Paimon crazy. When we were chatting with Mr. Dvorak, music seemed like such a positive thing, and most music is, right? It can help us relax, feel all warm and fuzzy, recall happy memories, or even just think happy thoughts. Paima never imagined that music could be used to commit crimes. Comes all, it comes down to the ill will of the user. The bad deeds influence the emotions associated with the music. Oh, really? Huh. Makes sense. <gasps> Paimon's musical understanding improves again! Well, anyway, now that everything's resolved, let's get back to Leo and Harbor. Byron's still waiting for us with our random event rewards. Our random event rewards? Oops. Not in perfect condition anymore. <laughs> God, I was like very like proud of that. Like, yeah, I fucking broke those boxes. <laughs> The treasure hoarder gets back. No! They were in perfect condition. I was going to return those. Oh, I'm so fucked. Yaylon, please, it wasn't me. It was the Canadian Windblade Man. Oh, somebody was underneath me. Great news! Oh, please wait here a moment, if you would be so kind. Lady Ning Wong instructed me to advise her upon your return. Hmm. <gasps> Another Many mommy. To both of you, long time no see. No need to be so formal with us, Ning Wong. We've known each other for a long time now. You must be super busy with all the preparations for Lantern Rite. Don't mind us. On the contrary, I think it is those that I have known longest to whom I should extend the greatest courtesies. Alas, on a different day, I would invite both of you inside for some tea and a brief respite from your travels. But you're quite right. Trivial matters aside, there's no escaping the fact that we have a grand concert to organize. Let's do it. Once the performance itself is over, We'll then need to invite the representatives of the Iridescence Tour for a discussion on future collaboration opportunities. The financing arrangements alone could well entail many rounds of discussion. Simply put, there will always be work to do. Whoa, you're already thinking that far ahead? <laughs> well, we can discuss more current affairs if you'd prefer. I trust you saw this year's Ming Shao Lantern at the docks when you arrived at the city? Yeah, big, big thing. Yeah, it looked like a goose. <laughs> Which adeptus is it modeled on this time? Like a goose. Seagazer. I believe you're familiar with the name. Hmm? Legend holds that he was free-spirited and easygoing. People described him as a cheerful soul and a loyal friend. It's been too long. I can't seem to recall. On this marvelous lantern rite, we pray that the fallen heroes may be guided home. If the sound of music can flow like the rivers and streams into every corner of the land, perhaps the souls of those who have gone before us will hear the song of a new era. I wonder whether the melodies will be to their liking. Oh, you're gonna love them! I'm unsure of it! At least, if the guy you mentioned is anything to go by, the Adepti and heroes of the past sound like a positive and free-spirited cheerful bunch! They're sure to be open to new music! <laughs> well... Let's hope so. I heard that you'll be going on a search with Ganyu to find the descendants of a fairy lady from a Fontaine legend. I'm sure this quest to uncover the truth behind an ancient story will turn into a most charming tale. Do share it with me, won't you? I couldn't bear to miss out. Absolutely. Here it is. What? Oh. 
So I guess the event is fully unlocked now. Uh... Okay, during Lantern Rite, Tian Ch Tian Chun, recruited for the Adventurers Guild, is eagerly rubbing her hands together in anticipation of an interesting event. A man's melancholic yearning, adept eye and demons, and heartfelt romance played out with paper. During Lantern Rite, Hui Xing, the navigator of the Crux fleet, seemed to be preparing for a unique training f test. In Leeway Harbor, an adventurer is busy with a certain task. I guess we'll go in order. Oh, God. You and Gan, you had agreed to look separately for clues about the woman in Dvorak's story. Now it's time to meet up. Uh, so I guess I'll do those... Wait. Should I do them now? Yeah, I'll just continue the main story two days later. Oh, well. Is that Thumpin' I hear? Oh. There's fireworks. Maybe the, maybe it's both. Um, this is gonna be going on. I still haven't done the test run for these new characters. Um. Wherever in this world I roam. Yay! Radiant sparks. See that one. My home. This blade. You can't have fireworks noises is not actually have fireworks. I guess you can. Uh, hey, happy lantern right, the scene ones. You guys have been having fun. How about going on a special adventure with me? Ah, you call us esteemed ones. Such a great attitude. Recently we've been having a lot of fun, but why is Paima getting a strange feeling that we've met before? You guys are extremely diligent adventurers, so I'm sure we've bumped into each other at some point. I'm Tian Tian. Uh, I usually hang around at the Feiyun Slope, looking to recruit new people into the Adventurers Guild. Everyone and their cats and dogs passing by have probably heard my voice. You do look a bit familiar. Yes, it means my effort were noticed by you guys. All the more reason for you to experience my masterpiece. At this point, of course, we'll lend you a hand. Can you tell us a bit about your particular adventure? Sure, I'll cut to the chase. Recently came across a new novel at the Wanwen Bookhouse. No, that's not it. Rather, I gathered some new information. I've noticed that people's expectations for adventure are rising in activities such as climbing and wind gliding are not as exciting as they used to be. In order to get more people to join the Adventurers Guild, we need to keep up with more novel and exciting approaches. So I teamed up with a couple of other recruiters, pulled together our resources, consulted a few expert mountain climbers and fireworks craftsmen, and designed a new racing challenge. There are many mechanisms laid out in the challenge. Just step on them and use momentum from the fireworks and gunpowder blast to accelerate into the sky. Fireworks? Gunpowder? So for the challenge, you want to blast people into the sky? Rocket propelled Paimon. Why are you excited? You're also going up. Although with your strength, an explosive barrel bursting you and bursting in front of you wouldn't phase you. But who knows? It might just blow you away. Not to worry. The explosion is contained inside a tough device. I've taken the necessary precautions to make sure it's safe and injury free. I've also filed a patent with the Ministry of Civil Affairs and have publicized this event many times. Please do not steal my idea. <laughs> There's so many hurdles. You've really put a lot of thought into this. As far as I can tell, just doing this racing challenge will stir the spirit of the adventure, even in an average passerby. Steam once your reputation precedes you. If you guys take point on this racing challenge, you'll be sure to attract a lot of people. I've also prepared great rewards for the challenge. I'll be sure to encourage more people to join the adventure school. Okay, firework and gunpowder race. Let's go. Oh boy, time for Paimon and me to get blown sky high. 
Hey, Pilot sees you laughing. As Yenshin said, it's perfectly safe. Don't you want to give it a try? Then it's a deal. Without further ado, please give it a whirl. There's a lot of tracks for you to try. I'm sure you'll have a good time with them. And I'll get a couple months worth of results. It's a win-win. Ah. Unlocks in 11 hours. So I can't do all these yet. Right. Um, so maybe I should just do the story. Yeah, the fourth day isn't completely unlocked. For any of those little minigame things. So maybe today's stream could be this, uh... Lantern Ride thing, and then maybe tomorrow I could do all the mini games, and maybe I'll hate them's story quest. Right, eight to ten p.m. Um, or a.m. Whoop. Looks like it's about time for us to meet up with Ganyu. Let's head to Eugene Terrace. Crumble. Crumble. Quick. All right. Easy peasy. Supposed to get teleported and glided down. Can you asleep? <laughs> Greetings, traveler and Paimon. Uh, what time is it? We're a day late. Are you okay, Ganyu? <laughs> you were nodding off there. Didn't you sleep well last night? Uh, I'm fine. Don't worry about me. Let's discuss the matter at hand. Since last time, I've been thinking a lot about the story Paimon told me. In essence, someone rescued a drowning man and performed some music. If that were all there was to it, it could have been many people. Human or Adeptus. But the tune was allegedly so wonderful that the drowning man forgot about everything else, even his own impending death, and only came to his senses after being brought to shore. Sleepy sheepy. Perhaps there was an adeptal power at work in that music that he, as a mortal, could not perceive. Or perhaps he sensed a power surrounding him but lacked the words to describe it, not knowing where it came from. Either way, if this part of the story is true, then the rescuer has to have been an adeptus. You really think so? But this story is all the way from Fontaine. Isn't this a bit of a long shot? Also, Paimon's really curious about how people from Fontaine think this fairy lady looked. Maybe they imagined her having wings. Maybe they gave her horns. Then she'd look just like Ganyu. Hmm. Guess that does technically make sense. Actually, Ganyu... If you had to save a drowning person, how would you go about it? Huh? Me? <laughs> um... Well... I'd get them to the shore, and then I'd probably hide behind a tree and watch them for a while. <laughs> Once I was sure that they were going to be okay, I'd slip away without a sound. So stealthy. So cute. Got it. So basically, <laughs> Ganyu's the type of person who doesn't like taking credit for her good deeds. No, it's not like that. I'm just not very good at explaining things. And I also find it really awkward accepting other people's gratitude. Well, what if this adeptus in the story had a similar attitude? That would explain why she just left without saying a word. She was probably thinking something like, 
One was merely passing by and saw <laughs> fit to address this egregious disruption to one's graceful zithering at once. <laughs> you may keep your thanks to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually a very good impression of Cloud Retainer, Paimon. As far as I'm aware, Cloud Retainer isn't the most <laughs> musically gifted. Still, we can't completely rule her out just yet. Um, if we set off now, we could head to Mount Outsung and ask her about it. You'll be able to confirm either way if it's her, and I can, um... Mm -hmm. I've been in Leah Harbor for so long now that I'm just not as familiar with the Adepti anymore. If there's anything we want to know about them, she's the best person to ask. Let's go. Sounds great. And we're pretty close with Cloud Retainer by now, so we probably don't even need to bring her food this time, right? I've prepared a gift for her to mark the festival, just in case. However... You still have some reservations? Um, Cloud Retainer spends most of her days studying mechanisms in her abode. She's on her own so much of the time that the moment she has someone to chat with, she just... Never mind. I promised I'd help Mr. Dvorak, and now that I've made the contract, I can't be having second thoughts. She, like, just go on and on and on? Traveler? Paimon? Let's set off for Cloud Retainer's abode. Seems like this is a tough decision for Ganyu, but she's made up her mind now. Paimon gets why she'd be so anxious. Hmm... Okay, how about this? <laughs> if Cloud Retainer tries to start telling stories about her again this year, we should pipe up and change the topic. Wait, did she leave already? Hey, Ganyu, wait up! Well, now I'm not going to change the topic. I'm going to let Cloud Retainer tell embarrassing Ganyu stories. Chill. Uh, I can't believe it. Cloud Retainer is not here. Huh? Did we miss her? She doesn't like to travel. So in the past, it's always been the other Adepti who come to visit her during the festivals. Could she be busy with something else right now? True. Now that I think about it, Cloud Retainer would be quite capable of taking care of anything on her own. There's no need to worry about her. Since she's not here, I guess the next step is to check all the other Adepti abodes, one by one. Uh-oh. Will it involve a lot more traveling? You're with somebody called the Traveler. Hmm. Um. <gasps> Got it! Paimon has a great idea! Please go on, Paimon. Our goal here is to find the Adeptus that helped Dvorak's ancestor, right? We can't hear any music right now, but... If she's really as nice as the story suggests, she'd definitely come to help anyone who was drowning, right? Hmm. Yes, I think that's fair to say. So, all we have to do is get the Traveler to pretend to fall into the water, and the Adeptus will come to the rescue! If you're so sure, why don't you try? You know perfectly well that Paimon can't swim! Paimon would sink like a rock! <sighs> I just think it's a bad idea. I guess I can give it a try. This is in...
Someone carries you ashore so quickly. <laughs> of course, Xiao shows up to save the traveler. How do you feel right now? Um. Uh, Shenha and the Conqueror of Demons. Uh, why don't you say something? <sighs> Please don't make Paimon explain it. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking for an adeptus who's good at being a lifeguard and playing music. But if the adepti aren't gonna stay home, then how are we supposed to find them? It wasn't me. Uh, yeah, so this adeptus is most likely a woman. <laughs> and I am not an adeptus, as you both already know, Traveler and Paimon. <sighs> okay, so this is Paimon's fault. Mm -hmm. This idea, she'd known how awkward this was gonna be. Sorry for troubling you both. Glad you're okay. <laughs> you're leaving already? As far as I know, the one you seek is no Yaksha. And one last thing. Don't pretend to drown. Your actions here caused others a great deal of worry. Do not repeat them again in the future. Oh, others, huh? Not you? As ever. The conqueror of demons comes and goes, just like the wind. Right. I didn't dare to say a word just now. How's your training going, Shenha? Have you made any plans for Lantern Ride? We could spend it together in Liyua Harbor if you'd like. <laughs> Warming up to the Sundari pitch. Yeah, Xiao's become more likable as time has gone on, especially since he has like a weak spot for the traveler. Oh. I had planned to spend the festival with Master this year. <sighs> However... Oh, speaking of Cloud Retainer, when did you see her last? Earlier this morning. She set off from Mount Hulao at dawn. I noticed she was using an Adeptus art of some kind to protect a mechanism that looked like a boiler. Hmm. Maybe it was a gift from Mountain Shaper. I did not inquire. Uh, so we just missed her. Please excuse me for a moment. I think I'll leave the gift in her abode. Sure. Thank you. It sounds like Ganyu and Shenha have gotten a lot closer recently. Yes. During the summer and winter, I continue to train with Master. In the other months of the year, I have been learning to adapt to human life in Liyue Harbor. Ganyu arranged accommodations for me in the city. And also recommended several work positions for me. But when I try to blend in by referring to her as Miss Ganyu or Lady Ganyu, like the others, she says I mustn't address her like that. Hmm. Sometimes I'm supposed to copy other people. Sometimes I'm not. It's a little difficult to keep track of everything. I'm sure it's kind of hard to blend in with the way you're dressed also. I mean... Ganyu just doesn't want you to be courteous or too courteous around her. She gets embarrassed when people call her Lady Ganyu. Oh, is that what it is? Hm. Noted. So, you came looking for Master today because you wanted to ask her about the Mystery Adeptus. Is that right? Yes. Yep. Oh, speaking of that, have you ever heard any music while out training in the mountains? Music? What is that? Oh my god. Or even a terrifying one. Okay, I'm done. I also left her a note so that she knows where to find us. We won't miss her again. Yay! That's really helpful. Thanks! We were just talking about this thing called music. And based on Paimon's description, I do believe I hear it every day. Please follow me. Hmm. <laughs> I'm sure there isn't any miscommunication.
This is the place. I enjoy training here to the sound of music. Uh huh. Silence. Me too. <laughs> the faint sound of bird song, the quiet murmur of the streams. <sighs> These are relaxing sounds. <sighs> are they not the music of which you speak? Oh. Uh, Paimon wasn't quite done with the description. <laughs> okay, fine. It's all Paimon's fault. What we're looking for are not the sounds of nature, but melodies played on special instruments. Sometimes singing. Oh, and a melody is? Go on, Paimon, sing us a nursery rhyme. Ganyu, why don't you sing that folk song you would like you sing to glaze lilies? Uh, huh? Hey, why don't you just sing that one melody Shen has heard before? It'll probably help her to understand what we're talking about. <laughs> Fingers crossed this won't attract any whopper flowers. <laughs> oh, I hummed. Oh, was that from the opera that Yunjin sang? Mm -hmm. That was a melody, and melodies can be called music. It felt like I was transported back to the past. In my mind's eye, I could see the Zhao lanterns lighting up the night sky again. We're all there, raising our glasses and drinking to our heart's content on the Jade Chamber. As I watched Yunjin's performance, I felt a warm sensation in my heart. And as the drink reached my stomach, it went from warm to hot. When you hummed that melody just now, feelings from a whole year ago came right back to me, as strong as they were on that day. Oh, so that's the power of music. Wow, Shen, huh? That was so deep! Music definitely has the power to bring up memories. It's like a time capsule with all the special moments from our life squished inside. What about you, Ganyu? Are there any melodies that have left a deep impression on you? Um, I don't remember if my parents ever sang any lullabies to me. I know some local folk songs. And a few other things come to mind, too. The songs of the sailors down at the docks. The little ditties that the vendors call out in front of their beloved shops. The tunes of folk artists performing on the streets. All the sounds of Leeway Harbor. Yes, that's right. In the past, whenever I heard the sound of those tunes, I always felt that they were worlds apart from me. Many in Liyue probably view me as a non-human. And they are right, in the sense that I never could connect with humans' artistic expression and their sentiments. So I haven't been able to integrate into their community and be a part of their lives. At least, that's the view I held in the past. Only more recently did I start to realize that... The only barriers are ones that I have erected with my imagination. The way those melodies make me feel isn't all that different from other people after all. They're about mundane details of everyday existence. Life's ups and downs, joys and sorrows. Even though we come from different backgrounds and have different stories to tell, when it comes down to the most common things that we see and experience around us each day in the city, in that sense, we're all the same. You go, Ganyu! You're really making progress. You have loads of friends in Liyue Harbor when you think about it. Like... Um... Okay, maybe some are more like co-workers and bosses. But, at the very least, Kuching and Chenna are your friends now, right? Yes, I am. <laughs> Technically speaking, we should refer to each other by the conventional forms of address used among fellow disciples. <sighs> but now that I know what constitutes a friendship, I do believe we are more friends than co-disciples. Thank you, everyone. Once the days are warmer, I would like to host you at my home in the city. Please invite Kuching as well. I've planted many types of flowers. 
<clears throat> I'm sure some of them will be to your taste. Uh, you are too kind. I couldn't possibly. Nonsense. You are my friend. I have cultivated and cared for the flowers just as you taught me. Once you've seen them for yourself, I am sure you can advise me how to do an even better job next time. I will save some for decoration. We can feast on the rest. Feast. Then, thank you in advance. Wait, what is that saying again? If you insist? Do people say that? <sighs> <sighs> I'm not completely sure either. Two robots standing next to each other going like, How do humans speak? Doubt Kutching will be munching on any flowers. Hmm. Who dares refer to one not by one's adeptus <laughs> title, but merely as that illuminated bird? Uh oh. Master. Our greetings, Cloud Retainer. Ah! There it is! <laughs> the illuminated bird is landed! Oh boy, Paimon. Double humph. <laughs> Double humph. <laughs> has the goal to use it rather than she, even after being chastised once already? Huh. Barely a moment has passed since we last met, and yet your impertinence has reached new heights. Very well. If you refuse to learn your lesson, one shall scold you no further. One has received your message from Ganyu. On the matter of the Adeptus you seek, one suspects to know their identity. Well, shall one lead the way? Yes, please, Cloud Retainer. I still have to complete my training for today. So I will bid farewell to everyone here. Very well. Await my arrival at one's abode later this night. On this special occasion, you should indulge yourself with some savory dishes. Happy lantern ride, Xinhua. If you want to release a Shao lantern, come and find us any time. Thank you, everyone. Happy lantern ride to you too. <laughs> And a flower attacks her. That's a little bit away. I'm not seeing any dropped frames, that's good. familiar with the name Guizhong, but have you ever heard of her? I've definitely heard it somewhere. Guizhong is another name of Agentis, the god of dust. She was extroverted in nature and adored social gatherings and inventions alike. Long ago, this region was yet a prosperous assembly. Guizhong often invited her friends to visit her home. Reserving for us seats around the largest stone table. Seagazer would always bring out his latest treasure and place it upon the table. Ah, oh, he could be quite the braggart. Though usually a mild-mannered fellow, when it came to those collectibles he was so fond of, he always loved to show them off. Paimon remembers that name. So that's what Seagazer was like. He was an old friend and a former rival. One has many memories of him. Once he had brought out the treasure, it would predictably become the center of attention. Neither Guizhong nor one was content to let him just steal the spotlight. So we would then also present our proudest mechanical creations. As Adepti, we were each gifted in our own ways and naturally proud of our accomplishments in our respective fields of expertise. As a result, one often quarreled with Seagazer. His treasures were not even of his own making. 
He just used his exploration skills to dig them out of the ground. <laughs> How, pray tell, could he compare to me when every single one of one's accomplishments were crafted by one's own hand? Cloud Retainer, you are getting competitive again. <clears throat> one digresses. <laughs> Regardless, every time an argument occurred, Gui Zhang would come over to watch us during our mutual lambastics. On some occasions, she would join in, and on others, she'd take one of us by the limb and start uttering the most ridiculous nonsense. What kind of nonsense? No kind of nonsense were we spared. Sometimes she would brazenly opine, Ah, why argue between yourselves when neither of you could ever hope to beat me? <laughs> Other times, she would make unsolicited suggestions, such as, once you two are done arguing, let's go to the foot of the mountain and grill some meat. She always sought to make everyone happy. And one must say, she had quite the gift for it. No matter what nonsense she said, one never felt bothered or offended. It also helped that she never referred to one as that illuminated bird or ladybird. <laughs> you, come on, get over yourself! Wow. Anyway, just as our impassioned arguments would reach the apex of acrimony, Marchosius would bring his delectable dishes to the table. Who would dare snub the stove god and his wondrous creations? At the sight of him, we would all immediately drop the argument and prepare the table for a night of feasting and drinking. <laughs> Back then, one was always bothered by how the cups Rex Lapis brought were always too square for one's taste. Can you see yourselves ever enjoying a drink from a square cup? I don't think I'd really mind. Then you are most tolerant, <laughs> but that is its own virtue. Even one could never find fault with Marchosius's cooking. As we ate, Gui Zhang would continue to find topics for conversation filling the table with humor and laughter. Each of those old fossils had their character flaws and points of obstinacy. So why was it that whenever we dined together, we always had a marvelous time? We would drink together from a spot high in the mountains until the moon set and the sun rose, and only then would the banquet finally come to an end. Streetwood Rambler would often remain to admire the flowers with Guizhong before returning to her own abode. The glaze lilies were far more abundant back then. Entire fields of them would appear to the eye as a veritable sea of flowers. Streetwood Rambler? That would be Ping. You probably know her as Madam Ping. Oh, okay. Wait. This is a lovely story and yeah. everything, but didn't we come here to find that adeptus from Mr. Dvorak's story? Yeah. Or are you saying that it was Guizhong? Didn't she, um, already, um... Alas, long has one avoided this place for precisely that reason. The sights here are a reminder of a time long gone and evoke much sorrow. One should have guessed that you would disrupt one's poignant moment of mourning with your incessant questioning. Wow. No matter. One will share the whole story with you now. Hey, there's a helotrail back there. Oh, never mind. In times gone by, one quarreled oft with Gui Zhang concerning mechanical principles. We each had our ideals, and neither would yield. This is what she sounds like without the filter? Under the pretext of a social gathering, one invited the impartial Rex Lapis to judge the quality of our creations. But Rex Lapis declared that Gui Zhang's obscuro vulpus mechanism was superior. <laughs> Though one hmm. was too proud to acknowledge it. In one's heart, one knew that Gui Zhang was indeed the superior <laughs> talent in the mechanical arts. Of our going crazy. As for the story between Gui Zhang and Streetwood Rambler, that begins with a certain bell. In Gui Zhang's opinion, while mechanisms were no substitute for human composers, they were yet capable of producing simple but fine melodies. But Streetwood Rambler believed music to be an expression of the soul. 
An emotional enterprise that could never hope to be replicated by machinery. They argued endlessly. The one on the right is Madame Peng. Intercede. He confiscated the bell and designated it for ceremonial use. She had a downgrade. Thereafter, one would often find them convening in the mountains, discussing music, mechanics, and all the affairs of the mortal world. But these good times were not to last. War broke out between the gods and soon engulfed the Guili Plains. Wei Zhang was overpowered by the enemy and fell in battle. When Streetwood Rambler and I arrived at the scene at long last, all that remained among the ruins was her lifeless body. After this, at Streetwood Rambler's request, Rex Lapis granted her the cleansing bell for safekeeping. To honor our friend's memory, one made a few finishing touches to her ballistic device. Many lantern rites have passed since then. Many greetings and goodbyes. Upon what do you gaze? The Gwaili Plains? No. It's... everything. We think of human life as like a lantern that's lit one minute and extinguished the next. But are we adepti so different? Perhaps as dust settles after a storm, we too must one day return to the world below. One has always been austere and private by nature, and has never relished socializing. One's dealings with Guizhang were born out of discussions on the discipline of mechanics. What? You have loads of friends! And you seem pretty chatty! <laughs> Just because one is not ignorant of social graces does not mean one is fond of them. One is perfectly capable of partaking in conversation despite being introverted. Hmm. But in the end, one is nothing like Streetwood Rambler. She is dauntless but thoughtful. Not to mention eloquent and wise. Moreover, her friendship with Guizhang was far greater than one's own. Back when they were rivals, they would often compete against one another in the realm of musical composition. That cleansing bell was one of Guizhang's proudest works, having the ability to both compose and perform. Wait, that's weird. Didn't Madame Ping say she pestered an old friend for that bell? And she also said something about being a vain beauty when she was young or something. <laughs> Streetward Rambler, a vain beauty. <laughs> My foot. That bell has a sad history. Clearly, she refrained from sharing with you the truth of its origins, since the right time had not yet come. As for her old friend, who else could it be? As soon as Streetward Rambler heard that a certain Zhang Li wished to borrow the bell, she realized that the man was none other than Rex Lapis, and that he had made an enormous decision. Spoiler! After all, we all have known each other for several millennia. Some things between us are implicitly understood. Whoa! So they were talking in secret code? Oh, Paimon did not see that one coming! <laughs> Enough of your intrusions. Where was one up to? Ah, yes. One remembers now. The cleansing bell is powered by a mechanical art and can be used to great effect as an accompanying instrument. After the passing of its creator, it was used on numerous occasions during rites of parting. But Streetward Rambler did not acquire it from Rex Lapis for the purpose of producing further funerary tunes. No. Each time she rang it, it was to play the tune that Guizhang composed on it. The two once clashed over their beliefs about the meaning of music. Who would have thought that with Guizhang's passing and Streetward Rambler's mourning, Two tunes composed in discord would eventually become one harmonious composition. <sighs> Once upon a time, 
Streetwood Rambler also loved gatherings, liquor, and music. But after Gui Zhang passed, she preferred her own company. She could often be found sitting alone at a mountain summit, contemplating and reminiscing with her zither. Music would go from mournful to soothing to impassioned. Many years passed before she finally composed a melody to her satisfaction. In celebration, she played the tune to the clouds. Regrettably, one has only ever heard her play that tune once. Which brings one back to the matter you've been investigating. Perhaps it was during that performance that the ancestor of your Fontaine friend fell into the water and was saved by Streetwood Rambler. But if she was so happy with the melody, why would she only play it once? One was also greatly perplexed by this. After suppressing one's curiosity for a long while, one finally approached her and asked why she would retire the tune after having spent so long on it. In response, she said, though the strings that played that melody survive, the one who inspired it is gone. Tell me, Cloud Retainer, when the one attuned to my soul is no longer here, who else could hope to understand this tune? Aww, poor Madame Ping. I just remember being taken care of by you when I was young. Once the Archon War came to an end, I stayed behind in Liyue Harbor to honor my contract. Although I met Guizhong a few times, I never knew anything of this particular story. Guizhong was quite the visionary, but tragically passed before her time. Her manuscripts still lie unfinished in the realm of clouds. The blank pages give one cause for contemplation on what might have been. Had you not decided to search for that mystery Adeptus, perhaps these stories too would have been lost to the sands of time. As of now, you know the truth. That the Adeptus who rescued the drowning man was none other than Streetwood Rambler. Do you intend to discuss this with her? Hmm. Do you mean Ping might find the topic too distressing? Precisely. The passing of our old friend is a heavy topic that both of us are usually careful to avoid. If I may be so bold, Cloud Retainer, could it be that this is just your own personal opinion? Oh? How so? I've been in Leo Harbor for quite a long time now, and I've witnessed many farewells along the way. So I, too, am well acquainted with the pain of the passing of a loved one. But this doesn't bring the city or its people to a standstill. They have to keep moving forward. Someone as perceptive and wise as Ping will surely have come to understand and embrace this. Though these immortal mountains have lost an Adeptus, the harbor of mortals has gained a wise elder. No loss can ever be undone, but there is always much that can still be gained. Ping has helped countless people, and will guide many others in the years to come. And all to whom she extends a helping hand become her friends. People she can admire flowers and discuss music with. Though it is heartbreaking to lose a kindred spirit, life goes on because there are new friends waiting for you further down the road. Kanye is right. We even asked Madame Ping what she thought about adding a music festival to this year's Lantern Rite. Oh, when we get back, why don't we just ask her if she'd like to perform? Maybe we can even get her up on stage. <laughs> you youngsters and your imaginations. Why don't you come with us? It's been a long time since you last spoke with Ping. And Leo Harbor is always decorated so beautifully during the festival period. Is not every lantern right the same in this regard? Were there ever anything new to discuss? One in Ping could meet any day of the year. I disagree. Each new day and each new year is different from those that have come before. How long will you simply let them pass you by? If nothing else, do it for Ganyu. Do it as a favor for me? <laughs> Very well. Then one will be off. 
If the other old fossils have sneaked away into the city to amuse themselves, one shall soon find out. All right. We should be getting back to the harbor as well. We don't want to keep her waiting. <sighs> Once the Gwaley Assembly, now the Gwaley Plains. Say, if we planted flowers there and cared for them carefully enough, do you think that one day we'd be able to recreate the Sea of Glaze Lilies? Allow one to take back one's praise from a moment prior. You are still far too given to flights of fancy, child. What? Cloud Retainer? <laughs> you were still listening? One observed that you were making no effort to leave, <laughs> and returned to chasten and hasten you. This time, one is departing in earnest. I'm flying away now. Why aren't you moving? I'm coming back. Ah, oh, yeah. So that uh, human version of Cloud Retainer, huh? With the, the red glasses, the bayonet on mommy. Hmm. It would be a shame to let that design go to waste. <laughs> Give me. Yeah, first thing I saw when I saw it was like Bayonetta? Bayonetta with red glasses? <laughs> but they also made that fucking design for like Madame Peng's younger self. Which I doubt she's gonna like. But I'm young and beautiful again with my harp, and I use a musical instrument. Don't think that's gonna be that way. But what does Cloud Retainer look like when she transforms back into human? Is she also gonna be like old and brittle, like Madame Ping, or dead and underneath my spear? Whoa, Madame Ping and Cloud Retainer. It appears you made haste after all. One arrived but moments before you. Oh, bless my soul. To what do I owe the honor? How nice of you all to come and visit me. Miss Illuminated Bird, haven't you said anything yet? Jesus Christ, Paimon. Said what, precisely? And why should one be tasked with saying it? Because you're the one who's known Madame Ping the longest. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Street word. <clears throat> or rather, presumably, you would prefer to be addressed as Ping? Oh, Cloud Retainer, you are uncommonly polite today. One, uh... uh hmm. <laughs> Given that Lantern Rite is almost upon us, the weather in the city is most pleasant, and a sweet floral fragrance lingers in the air. <clears throat> Gone you? Please continue from here. What what did you what did you even start? Huh? <laughs> uh all right. So this all started because we were trying to help Mr. Dvorak find the Adeptus who saved his ancestor's life. Recounts the story to Madame Peng. Cloud Retainer informed us that the one who played that melody and rescued the drowning man was none other than yourself. Ah. <sighs> Let me think. Yes. I do believe I recall that encounter. Uh. What a long time ago that was. I'm surprised that you still remember it. Even more astonishing, perhaps, is the fact that this story has survived this long at all. When mortal lives are so very brief. <laughs> It appears that she has proven herself right once again. Who's she? Who do you think, Paimon? We like to call her Guijong. From the look in Cloud Retainer's eyes, I sense that she has already told you all about her. <sighs> Albeit reluctantly, one might add. <laughs> there is no harm done. Nice rumor. At least they're farther away. On the third floor. After all, Lantern Rite's very purpose is to commemorate the heroes who gave their lives for Liu Wei. Although Gui Zhong did not live to see the splendid sights of today, you'll learn my ping. Oh, hero as any other. You'll learn my ping looks the way she does. It's not what you think. No. Okay. Uh, so how has she proven herself right again exactly? 
Once upon a time, she said to me that humans were a weak form of life that she wished to protect with her wisdom. City's empty. Wait. Nope. Not, not a single person. But as she interacted more and more with them, her opinions on them began to change. She marveled at the beautiful complexity of their spirits, the sheer splendor of all they could accomplish through their hard work and intelligence. She told us that to underestimate human potential would be to make a grave mistake. With the smallest amount of guidance, enormous power can be unleashed in them. And a human who has reached their full potential may well be her equal. Someone who could have as much to teach an adeptus as to learn from them. Hm. She always had a way with words. That her mechanical accomplishments were judged superior to one's own was, one suspects, in large part due to her sheer eloquence. Speaking of mechanics, Cloud Retainer, do you still remember that potted plant mechanism? The one that the two of you gave me as a gift? Of course. Gui Zhang and one both put an immense amount of effort into that gift. It would be no overstatement to call it a testament to each of our individual technical genius. As Gui Zhang once said, it takes every blade of grass and every flower to make a homeland. When I see the site of Liyue Harbor before us today, I am reminded of this. Madam Ping looks very emotional right now. Well, she's been through a lot in her time. <sighs> of all of us, it was Gui Zhong who was the fondest of these grand and exciting occasions. <sighs> If she were still with us, I'm quite sure she would still be trying to best Cloud Retainer's finest works at every opportunity. Liyue Harbor is always filled with the sound of music at this time of the year. If she were here, one is certain that she would seek you out to discuss and debate the virtues of various melodies. Oh yeah, music! We've been dying to ask. What was the melody that you played back then? Oh, also, with you being such a music expert and all, why don't you join the concert as a performer? I can make arrangements right away. Oh, as much as I don't wish to dampen your enthusiasm, it's been a long time since I played this zither. My fingers don't have the dexterity they once did. And whenever I play that tune, it always reminds me of her. I start wondering what she would think of the changes I have made to her melody. There was a period of time whenever I started strumming. It almost felt like she was back again. Sitting right there on the stone stool next to me, chatting away. Skybracer and Seagazer too, looking just like they did in the old days. No matter how much time goes by, the moment that melody starts playing, it transports me right back to that time in my memory. So the past still weighs heavily on your heart? Oh, I would be lying to myself if I claimed to have completely moved on. But that is not to say that grief doesn't get easier with time. Despite the sadness, I have found many things that bring me joy in life. It is simply the nature of the world in which we live that even if one wished to mourn for an eternity, it would be a nigh impossible feat. Just look at this potted plant. Isn't it stunning? I, I, I'll take your word for it. It takes an honest and open mind to confront and conquer grief. You have indeed made progress. <laughs> Be that as it may, I shall leave the lantern right stage to the youth of today. Well, if you're sure. Granny! <laughs> Whoa, what's everyone doing here? Did something bad happen? Oh, 
And now we've spooked Yanfei. <laughs> no, no. Everyone's just here to give me their regards for the holiday. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm glad. Well, in that case, happy lantern ride, everyone. Happy lantern ride. Happy lantern ride. Oh, I... I just remembered that I have some... Uh, work to do at your high pavilion that I need to discuss with Yanfei. I haven't been able to find a chance until now. I will leave Mr. Dvorak in your capable hands. Cloud Retainer, Ping, we will be off for now. Huh? Does it have to be right now? Which case is this again? Hey, Ganyu! <laughs> it seems Ganyu still has much to learn when it comes to the art of deception. What a pity. She has learned nothing of one's ability to carry a conversation. <laughs> Since it's been so long, Cloud Retainer, why don't you stay? I'll make a cup of tea and we can chat a while. Gladly. This was one's intention as well. <laughs> I want to see Cloud Retainer like dip her beak in the in a teacup and then swing her head back and gargle it. Like a bird. When you next see the Fontaine musician, please give him my regards. I'd like to wish him the very best with the concert. Graceful. You got it, Madam Ping. Thank you all. I think you've listened to enough of my nattering for one day. I need to turn you up to 1.5 speed, is what I need to do. As for that melody, I will play it for you all another time. Goodness knows I need to practice it first. Wow, that'd be great! We'll look forward to it! <laughs> when that time comes... Wherever her spirit may be among the countless grains of sand and specks of dust between the harbor and the mountains, perhaps she will look at the Liyue of today and steal a smile when she sees the prosperous land that it has become. All right, let's go tell Mr. Dvorak the news. Ping, what say you to convening more often in the future? That would be quite wonderful. But I must say, after all this time, I've grown quite accustomed to the harbor. When we are to meet, I shall have to trouble you to make the journey to the city. You sound just like Shen he. The child is constantly telling one all sorts of stories from the city, as if one was partial to them. <laughs> have you ever considered moving to the city, Cloud Retainer? There are plenty of people here to talk to. I think you would find it quite the antidote to the monotony of solitude. And if you looked around, I suspect you would find some young minds with an interest in the mechanical arts. Some of them even worth training. <laughs> we shall see. Moving to the city, getting a human form so that you can interact with people normally. And then become a playable character? Oh, I guess we'll, uh, we'll just have to see. Huh? <laughs> oh my fucking god! What the park Ah, and Kuching's here too! Thanks for helping set all of this up. Welcome back. Did everything go well? Really, really well. We found the person Mr. Dvorak was looking for. Go on. Uh, are you serious? Mm hmm. It was easy. We just asked our uh, demigod see. friends. So the melody my ancestor heard was an adeptus remembering her late friend? That certainly explains why it was such a powerful and poignant tune. Huh. That's a really interesting first reaction. Guess that comes with having a musical mind. Mm-hmm. I have to say, though, it, it's hard to believe that the fairy from the tale is now an elderly granny. Oh, Paimon knows exactly what you mean. Normally, adepti don't age at all. Yeah. Streetward Rambler, or Madam Ping as we know her, 
probably only became old because it's what she wanted for herself. Probably, or do we know this? Madam Ping possesses vast knowledge and great wisdom. Whatever physical form she may decide to take, her mind and wits are as sharp as they come. So she just wants to look like a granny, okay? Yep, Kuching summed it up perfectly. That's exactly what Paimon was trying to say. I think... Mm, yes. I must thank her in person. That can wait until after the concert, though. For now, I need to devote all my emotional energy to the performance. Ah, speaking of, Madam Ping wishes you all the best at the music festival. Paimon has a sneaking suspicion that she'll stay in her usual spot, but listen to the performances from afar. Mm hmm Wait, are you serious? Huh. Oh, no. Now I'm starting to get nervous. Yeah. I can hear that. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I am listening to the story, though. It's just going on. <laughs> so I'm just... Okay, I'll, I'll be quiet. I mean, that's your choice. It's your choice. Just treat it like any other performance. Relax. Just fucking relax. Okay. All right. Okay, all right. <laughs> nope. Another rehearsal is in order. Please excuse me, everyone. Mm-hmm. Mr. Dvorak? Oh, he's already gone. Paima wasn't even finished telling him everything. Before we set off on our search with Ganyu, he asked us about what music means to people. After our recent adventure, Paimon thinks we have a lot more to say about that now. Please, share your insights with me. Okay. Uh, well, we found out that music can be used for good, but also for bad. Um, it can make people happy and moved, but it can also be sad and bittersweet. And music is like a kind of memory written in people's hearts. It can put you in touch with feelings from a totally different time and place. Pretty much, though there was more to it than that. That was a broad summary, but not the most detailed. <laughs> it sounds like you had an eventful trip. Don't worry, I'm sure Ganyu will fill me in on all the details shortly. Wait, does that mean you're gonna carry on working? Mm-hmm. Just a few things to wrap up. All the groundwork is done. As long as everyone enjoys the festival activities, all our efforts are worthwhile. Happy Lantern Right. Happy Lantern Right to you as well. Bye. Whew. That should be everything taken care of, right? Oh, no, wait. My mom feels like she's forgetting something. Ugh. What was it? Oh, it feels like it was a while ago. Ah, uh, shoot. Latent. Wait, no. Anyway, uh. Bamboo shoots. Yep. Fancy bamboo shoots. Bamboozle soup. Jean Lee said he wasn't <laughs> in a hurry, so if we went now, there's probably still time, right? Right. <laughs> Jean Lee's well, dead anyway, from starvation. We we finally killed the god for real this time. Ugh. Anyway, let's go check with him at Wang Chung Funeral Parlor. Sure, we won't run into anybody else there. Oh, look, it's everybody. Jamming away. <laughs> Uh huh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. All right. Let's take a break here. Oh wow! Look who it is. Are you here to hang out with everyone's favorite funeral director? No. So you're just casually practicing your rapping <laughs> skills at the entrance to your funeral parlor <laughs> in broad daylight? Uh, okay. You're, uh, freaking me out a little. <laughs> I, uh, wow. <laughs> After everything we've been through, you don't see me for a hot minute, and you're back to being scared of your own shadow. Ow! We have all this open space, a clear view of the mountains behind and the sea in front. 
Not to mention we have several invisible audience members enthusiastically cheering us on. It's the perfect spot to rehearse. Invisible audience members? Ghosts. Gotta say, it took me a few days to get used to Director Who's way of talking. <laughs> Shinyan was pretty spooked too when she first got here. Just like when she sees a frog, but a giant frog with sharp teeth. Come on, knock it off. She's scared of frogs? I, I, I think I forgot that detail. What's wrong? I've never seen someone look so confused before. Well, don't worry, because Director Who's here to explain it all. <clears throat> there once was a Fontaine musician who went around town on a mission. He came door to door for his iridescence tour, looking for acts to audition. With my words, Shinyan's chords and Yunjin as our mentor, we'll take the stage by storm with flames roaring and the whole audience calling for more. Heck yeah! For Heck sure, yeah! The whole dance floor will be yelling encore! Encore! Oh, now Paimon's rhyming along. Um, but when you say flames roaring, are you sure this will be safe? <laughs> oh, don't you worry about that. I'm pretty experienced on the stage, and I've already informed the Yuhong of all the pyrotechnics we're planning on using. Huh. Guess we'll just have to trust Chin Yan on this one. Have you seen Zhang Li, Director Hu? Oh, Zhang Li? He took one of those fancy meal boxes and set off for the mountains. Said he wanted to pay a visit to some old friends. It's a real pity that he couldn't be around for this. As well as being a true connoisseur of traditional art forms, He's able to appreciate Shinyan's performances, too. Yeah, that's right. Matter of fact, he was the one who first invited me to perform here. To tell the truth, though, I never thought I'd really find myself rehearsing here one day. <laughs> well, now you know. The Wangsheng Funeral Parlor is a great location. All of you are always welcome to come and hang out here, especially if you're in the mood to try something new. Hmm... I can speak to that. Hu Tao is always full of fun surprises. And jump scares. Actually, Shinyan, I have some lyric ideas for your part. Do you want to go through them together? Oh, sure thing. I'm all ears. Oh, Traveler and Paimon, I believe Zhang Li was heading to Mount Hulao, so make sure you're hiking up the right hill. When you see Zhang Li, please pass on this message to him. It's up to him whether he wants to support us at the performance tonight, but I expect him to make time for the upcoming banquet we're planning. No excuses. It's been a long time since I've heard Hu Tao talk lines, uh, so I forget that she voice cracks this often. You should join us too. It'll be a riot. If there's one thing I've learned from being a funeral director, it's how to throw a party. Uh, what are the gals gonna say? Okay, everyone. I think that's a long enough break. Let's take it from the top, shall we? Ugh, Ms. Yoon is such a strict mentor. These breaks aren't even long enough to have a sip of tea. <laughs> well, you were desperate to get involved, and this is what it takes. If I gave you half the chance, you'd be sipping tea till nightfall. Hey, how about I treat us all to some late-night snacks once we're done? Hotel, what you craving? Hmm, how about some stir-fried filet with a side of crab roe tofu? <laughs> Where are we gonna find crab roe tofu so late at night? We could always just go pester masterful chef Zhang Ling. Mm, now I'm hungry. All right, let's knock this out and then go grab some food. Stop talking about food on stream. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, the animals are here. That's even more rude. <laughs> Greetings, everyone. Long time no see. Don't mind that illuminated bird number two. 
Hmm, a familiar face. Have you come from Liyue Harbor? How is the city nowadays? Everything's great! But you know, if you're so curious, you can always go and check it out for yourself! In fact, Moon Carver has been taking many walks on Mount Tianhang in recent times. I believe the sights of the city are quite familiar to him. Zhang Li! Here you are! We've brought the bamboo shoots you wanted! Impeccable timing. Chang Li puts the nation bamboo shoots into the cooking mechanism next to him. And Traditionally, bamboo shoot soup ought to be slow cooked for many hours on low heat. Using Adeptus Arts to hasten the process is something of a shortcut. Wait, that mechanism... is that...? Indeed. Cloud Retainer kindly lent me her supreme cuisine machine. Uh-oh. Did we ever fine-tune that? Can we not just call it a cooking machine? Actually, never mind. She seems to take a lot of pride in her mechanical gizmos, so it's probably best if Paimon doesn't go changing the name willy-nilly. I trust that you found the answers you were seeking during your recent journey? Yes. Excellent. The past should be remembered, but not overly dwelt upon. Our journey should be seen as a means to take on more from the world around us. When the bamboo shoot soup is ready, I must insist that you try some for yourself. Of course. Oh, Zhang Li, Hu Tao told us to tell you something. She said it's up to him whether he wants to support us at the performance tonight, but I expect him to make time for the upcoming banquet we're planning. No excuses. <laughs> when she says performance, she must be in the Lantern Right Music Festival. As for the banquet, uh, she didn't tell us anything more about that, but she invited us to come as well. As you can see, I have a prior engagement with two Adepti friends of mine tonight. Please, give Director Who my best wishes for the performance. As for the banquet, hmm, since the Director insists, far be it from a mere consultant like myself to refuse. Yay! Then we'll see you there? Absolutely. Rex Lapis, the bamboo shoot soup is ready. Uh, okay. Thank you. I will examine it right away. Hmm. The appearance is exquisite, and the aroma rich and intense. The craftsmanship of this machine is commendable indeed. Since you came all this way, you should not leave empty-handed. Please, take some soup. It tastes most exquisite while still warm. Piping hot bamboo shoot soup. Uh. Mm. Uh. Uh. Oh, it's a quest item. Ah, there it is. Bamboo shoot soup created using the Supreme Cuisine Machine. Zhongli rated this dish, this dish as such. The appearance is exquisite and the aroma is rich and intense. Among its key ingredients are nascent bamboo shoots. They're hard to come by and due to the multiplicity of reasons, their commemorative value far exceeds their worth as cooking ingredients. Since this meal was created by an adeptus, it shouldn't spoil it even if you just leave it in your bag. I intend to reminisce with my old friends for a while longer. You ought to get back to Liu Harbor. There is a performance you do not want to miss. Had one known that Cloud Retainer was in possession of such eminently useful devices, one would have sought to borrow one from her long ago. And yet, since you share my lack of enthusiasm for mechanisms and fine dining, it would have become a mere decorative ornament in your abode. Not so. Had one had such a device to make up for one's lack of culinary prowess, Chenha would not have had to rely on flowers and herbs alone for sustenance while under one's care. <laughs> hmm. In that case, shall we rendezvous with Cloud Retainer one day soon and request to borrow one more Supreme Cuisine machine? A fine idea. A fine idea indeed.
I'm seeing double. Four Zhonglis. Quake. Uh, back to the harbor. Yep. Yep. <gasps> Cutscene. I'm honored to be here on the Iridescence Tour stage. All right, without further ado, I'm Shinyan. This is Hitao, and this is a little something called... <laughs> the Bleed Lilies! Uh. <laughs> I'm up here blazing trails through the midnight sky. Lighting up the world below. And when the crowds all hear my voice, Opening the path without a fright. Oh, I'll light the fire, watch it blaze across the universe. I'll spit my rhymes, watch your step, or you'll get burned. Hey, woo! Yeah! Does anyone have any plans? <laughs> anyway. I think we deserve a celebration of our own. Mm. My treat. Interested? The Tian Chuan footing the bill? I can't miss out on that. <laughs> oh, look who it is. Hmm. Beiju. Beiju. <laughs> but it's been so long. Blessed one. I believe it shall be. Master, the Shao Lanterns, I. Ha! Elementary! One shall fashion for you a Shao Lantern, the likes of which the world has never seen. <laughs> and you must take it to Liyue Harbor to display its magnificence for all. Quest completed to be continued. What? Between facades and familiar faces. Oh. Yeah, that one. It's now time to attend Hu Tao's dinner. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll go to that after all this. Uh, Osmanthus wine. Stop. <laughs> Osmanthus wine. Please, I need more wine. <laughs> I need more wine. Just help me forget. I mean, remember. Same as I remember. Nope, we gotta wait one more day. Whoop. That's her. That <laughs> we that she's she was down at the dock. We have heard her before. Yo, have a blast. <sighs> Three parts of the story, okay? They talked about the uh, the musical thing being like the end of it, so I didn't know. It is. Thanks for the suggestions, Mr. Zhongli. I have them all noted down. That's the two boyfriends. They're always together. I've long heard that your knowledge encompasses all things old and new, Mr. Zhongli. But I never knew that you were well versed in the art of cooking, too. It is truly an honor to make your acquaintance. No need for formalities. I, too, feel humbled to be in the company of such talented young people. There are many things I could learn from you. Oh, you flatter us. Um, if it's possible, may I trouble you to provide a few words of guidance for my practices in exorcism? Exorcism? I can't say I'm an expert in the field, but if you don't mind, we could start by discussing... Oh, there's so many people here. All we knew was that hotel invited Zhang Li over. I never thought we'd be meeting so many old friends. <laughs> Happy Lantern Ride, everyone! Happy Lantern Brat! Likewise. Please take a seat. Happy Lantern Ride! Are you having fun? I'm learning a lot. I've become musically cultured. Me too. I've seen Shin Yan perform before, but this is the first time I've watched something like this. I heard that the audience loved it, too. And she's been receiving quite a lot of performance invitations lately. She's more busy than ever, and Yoonjin's gonna help her. Yep, and they asked us to pass on their season's greetings to everyone. They hope we'll have a wonderful gathering. The performance was spectacular indeed. However, it gave Xiang Ling a huge burst of inspiration, which in turn gave us a bit of a headache. <laughs> us? Did Xiangling ask you to try out her dishes, too? <laughs> that, my friend, is beside the point. Watching you eat was enough for me. <laughs> Come to think of it, I probably shouldn't have burdened Chong Yoon with eating my share, too. Hmm. Hold on. Xiangling came up with a new recipe? <gasps> Let Paimon try! <laughs> See? Someone here knows how to encourage people. Thanks, Paimon. Oh, and I have to thank Mr. Zhongli, too. He gave me lots of useful pointers that really drove it home for me. Oh, so that's what you were talking about before we arrived. Yes. Since we'll be dining together, the topic of our conversation naturally revolved around cooking. Chong Ling's ideas are truly unconventional. Her choices in both ingredients and spices are comparable to a melody dancing on the tongue. My suggestions were nothing more than the icing on the cake. The two of you always deliver. <laughs> now I'm getting embarrassed. Anyway, I'll get everyone to have a taste after I've adjusted the recipe based on Mr. Zhongli's advice. Hmm. 
That sounds like it might become a little safer to eat. <laughs> How about I sample the dishes next time? Speaking of eating, Paimon feels like we're missing someone. Oh, Hutia was the one who invited us, but she's not here. And oh, where's Guova? Oh, uh, Guova volunteered to help Dad at the restaurant. You know, lots of people come over to eat during Lantern Rite. Without Guova helping out, I probably wouldn't have had the time to accept Hu Tao's invitation. As for Hu Tao... The director went to collect a guest. She asked me to stay here and host you for the time being. Who's she gonna bring? Seems like it's almost time. Huh? Hu Tao went to fetch someone in person? Oh, that must mean they are super important. Could it be... Kuching? Ningguang? Or... <gasps> Captain Beto! She didn't clarify. And as her subordinate, I couldn't just pry into the details, could I? <laughs> Suddenly the door to the restaurant burst open as if struck by a hurricane. We're here! Oh, we're not late to the party, right? Right? Good thing the Conqueror of hmm. Demons and I are both as swift as the wind. And whoosh, we made it just in time. <laughs> huh? 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 Oh. Oh. I see. So the important guest is the conqueror of demons. I've been looking forward to meeting you. Meeting you for the first time. The director didn't mention anything when she invited us. What a pleasant surprise. Gathered here with us tonight are not only young and accomplished individuals, but also the protector of Leo's peace. Adeptus Alanis. To convene here with all of you is indeed a great honor. Uh... <laughs> a few days ago at Wang Shuen. We get a flashback? Loading. It's almost lantern right. Yet you took all the trouble coming here. <sighs> the director has a way of making it difficult to decline. Rex Lapis, may I ask what troubles you? The director asked me to buy sesame oil in preparation for the celebrations. Huh. Then why would you come all the way to Wang Shu Inn? I had a pleasant chat with Chef Yen Chao and received some spices from him. And, see? Here's some matsutake and a portion of ham. What about the sesame oil? Hmm. It's a shame. I couldn't find the kind the director was looking for. Time to load back to the other area, I think. Whoop. I'm sure you're exaggerating, Zhang. <clears throat> Sir. Uh, there he goes again. Enough with the pleasantries. Go let our guests take a seat. That loading screen, like... <laughs> <laughs> took up a lot of time for him to just say like oh i've always been waiting to meet you in person for the first time ever and never and literally days ago they, they talked everyone here today is well known in their own field and has probably heard about one another to some extent some of us are even old acquaintances so there's no need to be this formal i heard that the conqueror of demons and the traveler are pretty close no what is we're old friends Great. You two sit together. Hmm. I'm not gonna say no. Too, director. Oh? Finally remembered me? When we arrived just now, the host at Shinyue Kiosk told me our dishes are almost ready. Perfect timing. Let's not wait any longer and ask them to bring up the food. Is there still a seat? What delicious looking food arrives. Never guess the person who Tao went to fetch was Xiao. Oh, that's also the first I've heard of the Traveler and Paimon being friends with the Conqueror of Demons. We're friends with everybody. You know Xiao Chu? Knowing is a bit of an overstatement. I've always looked up to him. You might not know this, Paimon, but we exorcists have worked in close collaboration with the Conqueror of Demons for many generations, dispelling evil together, both in the open and from the shadows. Hard to imagine that thanks to Hu Tao, I've finally gotten the chance to meet him. Conqueror of Demons, I am honored to make your acquaintance. 
Likewise. It is a great honor indeed to have a chance to meet the legendary Conqueror of Demons. Chang Yun has brought that name up quite a few times in the past. I remember you mentioning wanting him to understand the importance of exorcists. Ahem. <coughs> uh, we know each other too. He helped try my dishes during the Masterful Chef's cook-off. <laughs> I didn't think we'd have the chance to meet again. Happy Lantern Right. No anecdote, however, compares to meeting you in person. I'm Sing Cho, Shangling and Chang Yun's friend. The pleasure is all mine. Whoa, everyone's getting all formal and polite all of a sudden. Uh, Paimon doesn't know what she should say anymore. Uh, Adeptus Shell, <laughs> mighty conqueror of demons. Please accept Paimon's greetings to belated happy lantern right. <laughs> belated isn't the right word to use here, but I. Very hard to look for a fancy word, okay? Don't be too harsh on Paimon! <laughs> There's no need to be so polite. <laughs> You're right. This was meant to be a nice little get-together between friends after all. Too much formality kills the atmosphere. I didn't plan this gathering only for everyone to walk on eggshells. Hiya. What's your true intention, then? A little get-together between friends, sipping the finest tea, and watching lanterns float into the sky, bidding farewell to the past, and embracing the present with joy. And that is something our consultant would say. I think it deserves a standing ovation. <laughs> Indeed. Uh. Exceptional acting skills, Director. <laughs> Did she have a little... <laughs> can... applause? As for me, I'm just here to have fun and treat everyone to something good. We all worked really hard this year. Whether traveling or guiding, cooking, helping with the family business, exercising evil spirits, or conquering demons. And of course, our consultant, who's been helping out at the parlor every now and then. Everyone has done some pretty amazing things. As the one who brought everyone together, it goes without saying that I'm the one most deserving of praise. Okay. Huh? Sounds kind of self-important, but... Paimon thinks it's pretty amazing that she managed to talk Xiao into coming. He rarely ever enters Liyue Harbor, after all. I'm curious about how she did it. It wasn't as complicated as you think. Not long ago, it wonks you in. Again. Oh, God. Load faster this time, please. Okay, Thank you. Gotcha. Thanks, boss lady. Uh, it's not boss lady, just boss. The boss. Oh, and there she goes. What a lively girl. Conqueror of demons, Adeptus Shao. Guardian of Wangshu In, hero of Dihua Marsh. I know you're there. <laughs> Quiet. Do not disturb the peace. Sorry, but you wouldn't show up if I didn't yell your name, would you? I know you. You're the 77th director of Wangsheng Funeral Parlor. Is there something you need? Time to teleport back in here and oh, activate a cutscene. <laughs> that does sound like one of Hu Tao's antics. We didn't we didn't get to the part where she convinces him. That was an introduction. What? Did the Conqueror of Demons agree to come so that Hu Tao would stop pestering him? There might be other reasons. <laughs> Smart guess. Huh? There's more to it? It gets pretty boring from here on. I talked about the funeral parlor's past relationships with the Guardian Yakshas. You know, just to be sociable. In the time of the Archon War, disputes were frequent. And disaster <laughs> overtook the land. Humans couldn't escape from the torment of the plague, nor could they escape death. Hey, Shao, Traveler's gonna be there. What? I'm, I totally, well, I'll come. I'll be there. I mean, if, if they're actually gonna be there. <clears throat> yes. The Adepti vanquished the demons. The Millilith fought valiantly. And Wang Sheng Funeral Parlor was responsible for purifying the diseased and sending off the spirits of the dead. That is how the border between life and death was maintained during the war. And it effectively prevented further incidents from happening. 
That's right. One point for the consultant. But despite our deep-rooted connection, it still took me quite a while to actually convince him. Was he worried about his karma? You know him pretty well, huh? This matter is out of my control, so I need to be cautious. True, but I've kept that in mind, too. That's why everyone here today is in one way or another acquainted with elemental power. Besides, it'll only be for a short while as we dine together. There won't be any lasting consequences. But I didn't expect there to be so many people. <laughs> There's no need to worry, Conqueror of Demons. We're not feeling anything unusual so far. Our young exorcist over here is protected by his pure yang energy, so he's probably the most resilient. That, that's not the same. Mm hmm And did you just toss your carrots into my bowl? Hey, don't look away. <laughs> huh? What? I'm siding with Chong Yoon. I saw that too. You're lucky Guoba isn't here today. He hates seeing people being picky with their food. If he'd seen that, He'd definitely make you eat all your carrots. Huh? Guoba would do that? Is he that uncompromising? <laughs> hmm. But now that I think of it, Shangling told me that Guoba used to be the stove god. <laughs> it sounds like you've heard the rumors. Hmm. Seem pretty quiet today. Is everything okay? I'm doing fine. Not long ago, before Lantern Rite, I met an old friend. Thanks to his help, things have been a lot more stable than before. <laughs> That's good to hear. Give everything you don't eat to Paimon. <laughs> or an old friend. I like the comedy one, but I actually want to know who he's talking about. You should know him. He's... God damn it. Huh, the wind? Seeds of story brought by the wind. Oh, it's Venti. <laughs> Did Paima just unconsciously complete that saying? That voice. Could it be? It must be. Hmm. The wine soaked bard. If I'm not mistaken, there's someone knocking at the door. Oh, don't just sit there, Zhongli. Go welcome our guest in. No such need. I'm coming in. It's blown open by a gust of wind again. <laughs> you finally let me in. Hello, hello. No matter if we've met before or not, this moment marks a brand new encounter. Old friends and new, happy lantern right. Oh, it's the tone deaf bard. Huh? <gasps> oh, <laughs> he seems to carry a valiant breeze wherever he goes. It looks like we're going to be friends. Fate has brought us together, so come on, take a seat, and be my guest. Help yourself. Oh, I'll ask them for another set of cutlery. Mm-hmm. This young lady here is as bright as a fresh bouquet of flowers in the morning's rising sun. She no doubt is the one with the most authority here. <laughs> Whoa, these dishes look amazing. Is it really okay for me to join in? <laughs> All right, I'm digging it. Huh, it's you. Oh, isn't this Jen Yu? <laughs> hmm? Jen Yu? Oh no, he's gonna give Xing Shu Xing pin name away. Uh, yep. Now that I've taken a closer look, you're a fan of Jen Yu's works, aren't you? I met Xing Chu at a light novel convention. Oh, <laughs> how I wish we'd met sooner. I never expected that there'd be another person in this world who could interpret Jen Yu's new novel as thoroughly as I could. Venti, you're being too humble. Considering your poetic talent, your fundamentals are way more impressive. <clears throat> could this new guest be Master Sing Cho's friend? <laughs> Look at that shit eating grin. Uh, looks like Xiao knows him too. Yes, yes. <laughs> Monsters become more active than usual as we get closer to Lantern Right. I was patrolling Dihua Marsh a few days ago when I happened to run into this. this. Hmm? You've already forgotten? I'm a bard, remember? And bards go around singing wherever they like. Oh, right. 
and this bard was performing in Dihua Marsh. It was a moving melody, and it made me feel relaxed and at ease. I couldn't help but stay and listen. <laughs> Thank you for your patronage. So that's how it was, I see. I understand now, too. I'm Zhong Li, currently working at the Wang Sheng Funeral Parlor. It's a pleasure to meet you, new friend. Mm hmm. And I'm his boss. Oh, and if there's anything unsatisfactory, let me know anytime. That's very considerate of you. Oh? Hmm. No wonder. Only a boss as savvy and reliable as you would be able to hire such an impressive consultant. <laughs> oh, you're too nice, Venti. Half the table is just keeping God's secrets away from the other half. Not to brag, but our consultant truly is impressive. <laughs> His knowledge extends across the stars in the land, and there's nothing throughout history that he doesn't know. I thought he was slowly turning his head towards Venti, but he was <laughs> he's following Hu Tao around the table. From the sophisticated way he speaks, it's hard not to suspect that he could very well be an adeptus in disguise. <laughs> mm. So, you're an adeptus. Do you think it might be possible? I... <laughs> Sorry. I'm only good at conquering demons. I'm afraid I don't have much knowledge in that matter. Uh, really? But Paimon thinks you're super knowledgeable. Paimon, play along. Huh? Oh, oh! Right! Uh, Chow's a warrior! He doesn't come to the city very often, so it's, uh, pretty normal for him to not know anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> eh? Really? I've actually heard a few things about Mr. Zhongli before. The guests in the tavern talked about this refined and courteous man who, instead of having wine at Mondstadt's finest tavern, <laughs> ordered a cup of hot tea with the most complex name. <laughs> Now that you mention it, I seem to recall that there indeed is a musician like yourself in Mondstadt. I've heard that he's elegant and amiable, his works witty and vibrant. It's no overstatement to regard him as the best bard in Mondstadt. It's very complimentary. <laughs> now you're making me embarrassed. I would say that Mondstadt's poetry is a little run-of-the-mill sometimes. There's one I heard a while back that went, uh, The old house is renewed, welcoming the spring breeze, awakening old memories. The meaning's there, but the word choices are unimaginative, and there's a distinct lack of literary flair. I think so, too. The composition needs a little jazzing up. If I were to give it a go, I'd make it... An old melon on a vine, a new flower that grows fine. Oh, good one! It feels unique and has a nice ring to it. You have great taste, Vendi. I was right about you. Let's shake hands. Hmm. Of course, of course. Hmm. Uh. Hey, Xingqiu. Hmm? Mind lending me a few books when we get back? Pick out some well-written ones. I don't know if it's my own lack of literary knowledge, but I couldn't tell the difference between those two. <laughs> I don't think it's your fault. Chang Yun's right. It's not our fault. They're weird. Paimon, watch and learn from Hu Tao and Venti. This will come in handy for your ugly nicknames. Oh, you have a point. <laughs> but speaking of, why is the tone deaf bard here? Are you here to take part in Lantern Right too? I heard that Liyue will be hosting a Lantern Rite music festival this year. As a musician myself, how could I possibly resist the temptation to come take a look? <laughs> or a listen. Getting to know other musical styles is essential to sparking inspiration, don't you think? Oh, but the music festival wasn't planned beforehand. As for the Fontaine friend who hosted the festival, I saw him near Stone Gate the other day. You directed him. The Iridescence tour has finally been held successfully for once, so I had to congratulate him. Thank you, you must feel very grateful. Don't think anything of it. By the way, 
I was watching as you entered Shinue Kiosk, but no one seemed to notice me. Should I say that it's because I'm an expert in hiding, or that a certain someone deliberately ignored the sound of the wind? <laughs> Whenever Lantern Rite comes around, Liyue Harbor becomes bustling with activity. People are all busy watching the lanterns and strolling around the shops, and they might just go travel somewhere on a whim. It is rather difficult to predict another's whereabouts. The festival is in full swing and proceeding smoothly, and we're all gathered here with friends, new and old. This is no doubt a wonderful occasion worth celebrating. To come together with all of you at the beginning of the year, one can't help but be filled with joy. In a moment like this, I propose we raise a glass together. In my case, tea in lieu of wine. Uh. <laughs> Very well said, Mr. Zhongli. That was exactly what I wanted to say. Uh, now I'm getting a little self-conscious. I didn't cause you too much trouble barging in like that, did I? We usually drink wine during occasions like this over in Mondstadt, but since Mr. Zhang Li insists on drinking tea, I'll give a toast with tea too. <laughs> Everyone, thanks for the treat. You're welcome. As the host of this gathering, I hope everyone enjoys the food and drinks. May this year be better than the last. Considering that everyone may have other matters to attend to later, sticking to tea seems like a good idea. Uh... Hmm. Uh, all of a sudden, they started proposing toasts. Should... Should we? Ciao! What's with the urgency? Are you done eating? Want to head out for a walk? Uh, I ate too much. Could you come take a walk with me? Uh, Want to head out for a walk? <sighs> sure. Have you two finished eating? It's always nice to have a breath of fresh air after a meal. Helps with digestion. Um, uh, Pine will come too. You're still hungry, right? Uh, yeah? Don't worry, we'll be back soon. Okay then, don't forget to come back! Talk with everybody. It seems like our new friend is an expert in wine. I deserve no such praise. I only drink for fun. It's nothing compared to your expertise. <laughs> I'm glad we're only having tea today. What if I got drunk and said something nonsensical? I'd surely become an object of ridicule to someone I've just met. No such thing. I wouldn't dare disrespect the director's guest. You're not allowed to leave Paimon here alone! To be honest, Paimon's worried about saying the wrong thing. Did you talk about anything interesting before we started the meal? Anything fun I missed out on? Oh, we were talking about cooking. Mr. Zhongli told us that he went on a trip to Chaoyang Village the other day and got a hold of some uncommon ingredients. Tea seed oil and sesame oil. He suggested I try using those in my new dishes. Oh, no wonder he left his post for so long that day. Those ingredients would be difficult for anyone else to find. I guess I'll need his help next time as well. About you and Venti. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Could he be a partner in your family business? That's right. You know how my family is. A lot of business secrets can't just be divulged at the dinner table. Ah, uh, just as I thought. Let's depart. You go ahead. After me, I suppose. Are you all right? I should be the one asking you that. <sighs> I... it's hard to describe. Unfamiliar with gatherings like this? It's not that. 
There were those among the Adepti who loved gatherings and idle chit-chat. Sometimes they would call up a few others for a drink. Even I got dragged along to their gatherings many times. The Adepti all have their specialties, making most of them proud and arrogant. Everything they say is straight from the heart. It never gets too complicated. But this time... I understand. It's all Zhang Li's fault. It's all Venti's fault. Oh, who do I blame? Uh... Venti did complicate things. No, no. <laughs> I didn't mean that. So you know his true identity. I'll get straight to the point then. The Animo Archon is a free spirit. And his temperament is as carefree as the music he plays on the flute. It's easy for a god like him to live in harmony with humans. And that's something I might never be able to do. You don't have to be like them. You do you. Hmm. That does sound like something you would say. No matter. I know my circumstances. Whenever I think of the ordinary conversations I've had with you, it feels... strangely novel. Strange in a good way? Yes. The parlor director went out of her way with the invitation, so it was difficult to turn her down. I had made mental preparations before agreeing to come. She told me that all the guests today would be acquainted with elemental power, and I knew that you would be here. But I didn't expect the other guests to be... No one would have guessed. General Capesis always said that we should live in the present and enjoy every pleasant surprise. Perhaps that's what I should do with what I'm feeling now. But I think he meant designing clothes for those around him. The clothes were intricately designed, but inconvenient to wear. Brother Bosatius never tried to hide his distaste in front of him. <laughs> Rex Lapis did like his designs and even collected quite a few. The outfit he wears now was also designed by General Capesis himself. I never saw him wear this during the war. I didn't expect him to start wearing it later. Oh, here you are. Um, I'm not intruding, right? You're not. What is it? A hotel saw that everyone's done eating and asked the staff to bring out the desserts. Paimon got so anxious that you weren't back yet that she scarfed down her dessert without the usual slurping and munching. But not so anxious that she can't eat. Sounds like she'll be okay. And to be honest, I was kind of worried too. You looked a little restless just now, and I thought you weren't used to the food here and was planning to head back to Wangshu Inn for something Yan Chao made. You're worrying too much. Xiao, don't pull any... Limnostatic wind cyclings on us. What the? F Hang on. Limnostatic? Limnoscatic. Limnoscatic. <laughs> okay, what does it mean? Wiktionary. In algebraic geometry, a limnoscate is any of several figure eight or infinity shaped curves. Oh. Don't pull them your, like, infinite wind cyclings? I don't know. Why would I? Anyway, let's head back. Please wait! Nice fucking... thesaurus word. There's another reason why I came looking for you. Mm-hmm. Here, take these. I brought them for you. Almond tofu? <gasps> yup. Since the Masterful Chef's competition, you could say that Yan Xiao and I are not only competitors, but good friends as well. I visit him at Wang Xuan sometimes to discuss our cooking. I heard him say that the esteemed guest on the roof loves nothing more than a good plate of almond tofu. So I learned a thing or two about the dish from him. I'll be honest, before Hu Tao invited everyone, she secretly came looking for me, told me about the guest she planned to invite, and asked me for some suggestions on what she should order. So I made a few servings of almond tofu for you guys in advance. Take them as a token of gratitude for your support. 
When I told Globa that I was making these for you, he started eagerly running around the kitchen and helping a lot too. Thank you, Zhang Wing and Globa. Thank you for the trouble. There was no need to. <clears throat> I'll take them. Thank you. And Globa too. You're welcome. Oh, the almond tofu I made probably tastes and feels a little different from the Taipian Shao cooks. Please let me know if there's any improvements I should make. Okay. <laughs> That's all. Alrighty, we should head back now. We can't keep Paimon waiting. <laughs> Excuse me. Pretty quick. You're only angry because we had no. You have no sense of time. How could you say that to Paimon? <laughs> In that case, besides having no sense of time, Paimon will let you know what having no sense of fullness looks like. Your dessert is all Paimon. <laughs> Sorry to keep everyone waiting. No worries. We're all just chatting here. There's no serious business to take care of. Whether we're chatting outside or inside, it's all the same. Strive to be more like Hu Tao, Paimon. Hmm. Paimon's too busy eating to talk to you. Huh. But even though we're all well acquainted by now, I think this festive gathering deserves something ceremonious. Oh? Is this some local custom? Nope. Uh, okay. This is something I made up so that good luck will be on our side, that's all. Spontaneity is the best choice to make here. Um, let's use this incense burner on the table. It's been lit for so long now that the incense is running out. I'll leave refilling and lighting the incense to the most distinguished guest among us all. Lighting the incense will signify continuous growth and prosperity in all our endeavors in the new year. I see. Perfect symbolism, as expected of Hu Tao. And speaking of the most distinguished guest here today, I'm sure we all agree that it's Mr. Zhang Li. <gasps> I'm not very familiar with the details of his past deeds, but chatting with him has been a real eye-opener, even for a bard who has traveled all across the world. If knowledge were a form of power, one could even say that you're a wielder of unlimited strength. But when it comes to having a way with words, the notable bard is certainly one cut above the rest. I just happen to have a good memory. It is such an unexceptional skill, yet you made it sound like an unparalleled talent. I am truly impressed. Since we all get to nominate someone... <laughs> mm -hmm. I think it's only fair that we let the parlor director light the incense. Huh? That won't do. Don't flatter me just because I'm your boss. We are looking for the most distinguished guest here. As the host, I shouldn't be involved in this discussion at all. Now that we've enjoyed this table full of delicacies, how about we let our one and only chef here do the honors? Um, is this really the way this works? I didn't cook any of these dishes. It's not a big deal. Just look at her, Xiang Ling. The disciple of an adeptus, the stove god's best companion, the winner of the masterful chef's competition. <laughs> the only heir of the famous one mean restaurant. A good old friend of mine. There's no better choice. <laughs> uh, why does Paimon feel like we're back at square one again? <laughs> Please stop. You're making me embarrassed. If we're looking for a distinguished guest, surely the second son of the Feiyun Commerce Guild counts. It's one of the largest commerce guilds in Liyue Harbor. <laughs> clap, clap, clap. Huh? Don't get me involved in this. 
Oh, not a bad choice. With the Commerce Guild's young master lighting the incense, we're all sure to make a huge sum of Mora in the new year. That's not how it works. Making a fortune is indeed a fine wish, but it's of lesser importance than good health and happiness. Which means we should choose Chong Yun, the skilled exorcist who keeps everyone's home safe from evil spirits. Huh? Now you're nominating me? I can't be the one when we have the Conqueror of Demons right here. Adeptus Xiao has the most seniority among everyone here today. We should... I refuse. <laughs> I am most certainly not the most distinguished guest here. Is he going to say it's Xiong Li? Or is it going to be me? You should all be able to make the right judgment based on your observations. Wait, don't... One person here is well acquainted with everyone else. <laughs> huh? <laughs> oh, that's right. Even though you're always mocking Paimon, you're still pretty popular with other people. No, wait. Paimon said she wouldn't talk to you again. I'm not the only one well-connected per... <laughs> I'm not the only well-connected person here, though. Huh? <laughs> Who else is there? Uh, take a look in the mirror. Huh? Huh? Does that mean... Paimon's the most distinguished guest? <laughs> oh, well, that was unexpected! <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Paimon's just the one we need. Without a friend constantly by your side, a long journey would become dreadfully lonesome. But once you have someone there to brighten up the atmosphere, everything along the way will become lively and vibrant too. Ah. The Traveler has traversed many nations and left behind a great deal of fascinating stories. But without Paimon, they would have become quite monotonous. Paimon plays an indispensable role in making your journey a happy and smooth one. You guys! Paimon's not used to being praised like that! Uh, those were genuine compliments, right? Of course, you're the best travel companion ever. Thank you. You made Paimon wait for a long time, but... Paimon's not mad anymore. It was like two or three minutes. Don't take everything to heart, Paimon. Friends tease each other all the time. Hmm. That is indeed true. That means Paimon is as important to the Traveler as Guova is to me. Looks like we've come to an agreement. Any objections before we proceed? I object to my own thing. I trust the Traveler's judgment. Then Paimon it is. And now, the world's most excellent traveler's greatest companion, guide, and friend, Paimon, will be refilling and lighting the incense for us. Here you go. Take the match. And uh, don't burn yourself. But if things go really wrong, here's a two-for-one coupon. <laughs> she clumsily lights the incense. Novel, relaxed heart-to-heart -heart chat all the way until nightfall. Now that everyone's had their fill of delicious food and tea, it's time to say goodbye. Oh, it's getting late. I won't take up any more of your time. You're all free to go as you please. Thanks for the treat, Director. Yep, the tea was amazing, too. You don't have to go all polite on me. Just remember to come when I invite you next time. Hmm, let's see. It's dark out, so I'm going to accompany Xiang Ling, Sing Cho, and Chang Yun back home. As for the rest of the guests, I'll leave them to our consultant. No need. I'm headed towards the harbor to meet a friend on the ship. There's no need to trouble one such as Mr. Zhang Li. I think you know the place I'm talking about. Come meet me anytime. I will. It was great getting to know you all. Let's meet again when the spring breeze begins to blow. Bye. Oh, we should write poetry together sometime. We'll catch you all later then.
Don't forget to return to the parlor later. There's something I need you to do. Understood. See you later. Bye. <sighs> well then. Rex Lapis. Just Zhang Li will do. I live as a mortal in Liu Harbor now. I am just one among many who begin work at sunrise and retire to rest at sundown. If we were to consider status and seniority as Zhong Li, I should be respectfully referring to you as Adeptus Xiao. Ugh. Heaven forbid. <laughs> Adeptus Xiao. Not you two. <laughs> <laughs> I meant what I said. I heard that during the Lantern Rite Music Festival, you conferred with Streetward Rambler and Cloud Retainer. I take it as you've gained a lot more knowledge about the past? The same truth will sound different coming from different people. As more bear witness to a story, feelings and interpretations expand in variety too. I once had a pleasant chat about the past and present with a Sumeru scholar named Soraya, hmm. and learned a few things about her research topic. Soraya. From the evidence she found and the conclusion she made, her area of research is already very close to the truth. But there are multiple sides to humans and gods alike. In the legends recorded by humans, some gods were depicted as arrogant and condescending, while others were kind and capable. But whether to me, Streetward Rambler, Cloud Retainer, or younger Adepti such as Xiao and Ganyu, those Adepti and gods that may seem extraordinary to humans are something more akin to close companions. This was as true back then as it is right now. Just how Xiao may seem unapproachable to most, but the Traveler has proved otherwise. So there's no need to dwell too much on certain things. Rex La... <clears throat> I mean, Zhang Li, what you're saying is... It looks like you understood what I meant. Ah. The Director asked me to accompany you on your return. But I don't think you'll need my protection. I'll be taking a walk around and admiring the night scenery. After that, it'll be time for me to go back and meet up with the director. Goodbye for now. Bye, Zhang Li. Everyone's gone now. Paimon always feels a little empty inside when a lively celebration ends. Like, at least you always stay by Paimon's side. No, no, no. Paimon got it mixed up. Paimon, the best and most distinguished travel guide, will always stay by your side, traveler. It's my honor. I'm afraid there'll be a lot to ask of you in the future, too, most distinguished Paimon. Hmm. Good that you're aware of that. <laughs> Shell, is there anything else you want to do? We could take you on a tour of Liwa Harbor. No need. I've stayed here for much longer than I had expected. The city lights are a fine sight, but it's time for me to leave. The events of today occurred so abruptly. I appreciate your kindness. Feelings mutual. You don't have to thank me every time. Okay. I'll see you next time then. <laughs> like the wind. That's it. Let's check. Festive fever. You feel okay? Okay. I think I just got done with the story, and I'm guessing you get these points uh, to get a, a free character here. You get the free po you get the points from those um, four mini game things. Okay. Well, I'm not going to do that right now, but I will, however, uh, pull up this image here. It shows where all the the people are during Lantern Ride. I'm just going to go to each one of them. All right. Uh, I guess we'll start in Leeway Harbor. So go here, Yunjin and Shinyan. Yeah. 
We're children, we're children. You can look at the map a little closely here. Uh, further this way. Hmm? Ah, there they are. Okay. Now I need to get a move on and write my next song. <laughs> Listen to you. You only just fulfilled one lifetime dream. Are you really thinking about your next goal already? Don't try to tell me you ain't the same way. I bet you've already thought up a name for your next opera, haven't you? <laughs> you know me too well, Xinyan. The Adeptus Seeking Voyage. How does that sound? Oh, oh, oh man! Yeah, I can already picture it! I've also got just the finishing line for it. I'll close with, and the celestial melody echoed through the clouds forevermore. All right. Um. B -b 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 <laughs> here somewhere. Crumble. Crumble. Rise. Quake. Oh, buys you and Chi Chi. The lantern rite celebrations are getting better by the year. Such wonderful music. Doctor buys you. I've brought the herbs. Who are they for? The singers. Performing at a music festival is very demanding. Using these herbs in good time will protect their voices from damage. Oh, that's why you were preparing them all night. <laughs> I dared not neglect the Yuhung's request. Her messenger was quite insistent that it should take top priority. Let me double check again. This one is for... Okay. Um, you go that way. Time to go. One with nature. Well, climb, please. Quake. Beidou and Ning Wong. Hey, don't tell me you called me over for just a game of chess. You have to be more specific, Captain Beidou. Is it that you find playing chess an uninteresting activity, or that you're unhappy about my lack of novel ideas? No, I thought we were just gonna fuck. If you don't specify what you mean, how could I know what I should do to please you? Ah-ha! Uh-hmm. -huh. Uh, mm. <laughs> Of course. I make a single remark and you reply with a full-blown lecture. Maybe we should deal with all official affairs publicly in the future. Might just make things easier. I'd be perfectly happy with that. I'm just worried that Captain Beto's business might be negatively affected. Don't give me that. That woman from Yenshang Tea House sometimes comes aboard to ask for information. She requested the fleet to import some goods, but... How could I not know who she's actually working for? Oh. <laughs> you sure know a lot, Captain Beto. How about I ask her to come over? Or maybe we go straight to her tea house. With one more person around, we'll be able to have some variety in our chess games. I hope that that would be less of a bore to you. <laughs> so, we're still gonna play chess after all. <laughs> she just wanted to invite somebody else. Okay. Uh, next one. Oh, okay. Over this way. Near the food stall here. Guoba and Zhongwei. The vegetables are fresh, and there are enough wheats and grains stocked up. I'll pass on the seafood. Me too. Oh, it's you. 
We meet again. Surprised to see me here? It's the director's orders. Chongling worked all day and night at the restaurant during the festival and didn't get to have any time to enjoy the festivities. The director sent me here to help out in the kitchen so that Chongling will have some time to herself. But with someone as hardworking as you around, there seems to be nothing much for me to do. Melele! <laughs> It feels good seeing my old friend in the kitchen, fetching ingredients and lighting fires. Perhaps I should borrow Cloud Retainer's Supreme Cuisine Machine to speed things up. <laughs> You'd still prefer to make them by hand, but of course. Okay. Chops away! The gang's all here. <laughs> Sing Cho, you have to be honest. Hmm? Honest about what? How did you and Venti really meet? W why are you suddenly asking that? Huh? Aren't they book buddies? Yeah, we met a few times at a book convention. That's all. Oh, really? With that extraordinary demeanor and literary talent, he's definitely not just any bard. If he's someone that could hold his ground in a conversation with a consultant, he needs to at least be as talented as me. Um, perhaps you're overthinking this matter. Uh, Hu Tao, Xinxiu wouldn't lie to us. Uh, okay, I'll tell you the truth. Huh? Xinxiu! I'm actually a fan of Venti's poetry. You all know that I love reading, and sometimes come across poetry from Mondstadt. Among those works, I admire the ones penned by Venti the most. Just as Hu Tao said, his artistry is the reflection of his personality, remarkable grace and exceptional literary talent. I guess Venti didn't tell you the whole truth back at the restaurant because he didn't want to embarrass me in front of everyone. He's such a considerate person. Uh, yes, right. I can confirm that. When Sing Cho was busy with other things, he asked me to buy him poetry books in secret. I see. That didn't sound like too much of a big deal. You could have told us right away. Well, I'm telling you now, aren't I? Oh, so that's your story. Ugh, forget it. Let's drop this topic. <laughs> it's not often that the four of us are all together. What should we do next? Hide and seek? Hopscotch or some shopping? Since there's four of us, why don't we borrow a mahjong set? Okay, I think that's all the people in Leeway Harbor, Chinksa Village, Slimes solidify. There is no escape. Take. Wait, can this thing be damaged? Stabilize. Shine down. I see everything. Mm, okay. There's like sparklers here and there. <laughs> hey, you look like an adventurer. You got a vision? Why are you obsessed with visions? Because <laughs> I want one for myself. With a vision, you can get money and status. If I had enough money, mom and dad could come back to the village because they wouldn't need to work in Leewa Harbor anymore. I told my friends about visions. Now they all want one too. Yeah. In a world where like elemental superpowers exist. I'm sure that'd be something all the children would want. 
Yanfei and Madame Ping. Dong Dong! <laughs> Granny, you play so beautifully. Do you think you could teach me? Oh, child, you simply never stop, do you? This festival is a rare chance to rest and relax. But here you are pestering me to teach you this, that, and the other. <laughs> Don't worry, Granny. I'm a fast learner. And anyway, the sooner I start learning, the sooner we'll be able to perform a duet together. A musical duo is only as good as its weakest link. So you gotta teach me all your secrets, okay? All right, all right. Well, you can start by making me some more tea and leaving it to cool on the side. Sure, Granny. Um. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm so happy. And all the grandmas and grandpas in Chingsa Village had a great time, too. Why Chingsa Village? You mean, what am I doing here? Well, just now, I did a performance for everyone. Although I can't play an instrument anywhere near as well as Master, I can still sing. Even Granny Roisin said I did a great job. She also gave me some candies. <laughs> okay, now let's see what the other three I'm things so are. Happy. And all the about your Master! And masters told me a lot of stories about the Adepti. There was Sky Bracer with the giant deer horns, and Sea Gazer who loved to collect treasure. Sometimes Master talks and talks for a <laughs> long time until her voice starts to sound sad. But then she always breaks into a smile again and tells me all of the things each of them loved best about Li Yue. I love everything about Li Yue. Some of the Adepti are gone now, but it's okay because I'm going to help take care of everyone in their stead. I'm so happy. And all the about Dvorak. I'm happy that Mr. Dvorak found the fairy lady from his story. And I'm also happy that it turned out it was Master all along. Also, I helped out this time too, didn't I? So that means I was paying homage to my Master? Oh, oh, also, Mr. Dvorak got one of his friends to bring me a toy from Fontaine. I like it a lot. At first, I didn't know whether I was supposed to accept it or not, but then Master said it was okay, so I did. Was it the last one? Like, just I'm like... so happy. See ya. The... See you. Make sure you take good care of Paimon. Oh, and please come play with me if you ever have the time. Okay. <laughs> Tell another one, Uncle Gas. Just tell it to me already. Quit being a little shit. And tell me, Uncle Gas. Do it. Do it or I'll scream. <laughs> hey, it's Yao. Yen Shao just came up here with some almond tofu, but I haven't finished everything Shang Lin gave me yet. <laughs> I'm like a bully. I am making fun of everybody. <laughs> dong dong. Just make it for that kid for being excited about his <laughs> uncle's stories. You should try some too. I'm not as experienced in tasting mortal food as you, and I couldn't tell the difference. There must be many different stories to tell of the hustle and bustle of the mortal world too. You can tell me. I will listen. <laughs> Uh, last one is over here. Can I teleport to this? Oh, thank God. That's changed. That definitely was not a thing before. Wait, there's a world quest here? Uh, yeah, before that. This is such a cool ship! Facing the sea breeze and gazing out at the soaring seagulls. <sighs> Makes me want to sing out loud! Kazuha, how about I stay here and be the ship's resident bard? What are my prospects? With your level of artistic finesse, I'm sure nothing will go wrong. But I'm afraid the sailors aboard are not the most versed in the arts. They probably wouldn't understand the <laughs> deeper meaning your poetry holds. Excuse me, motherfucker! <laughs> you can't 
say that for sure. Poetry is spur of the moment creations. Anyone viewing the same sights and experiencing the same atmosphere would surely understand. Ah, <sighs> there's a port in Mondstadt too, but I rarely get the chance to board any of the ships. Speaking of ships, everything's perfect about this one, except. Hmm? Um, Kozua, could you tell your captain that my height says nothing of my age? I'm way past drinking age. How often does one get to enjoy a seafood feast on a ship? Uh, it'll be a real shame if there isn't anything stronger to enhance the food. Pretty please? There's not much I can do about that. <laughs> it's not because Captain Beto's not on the ship right now, but because there's no room for negotiation on this matter. <laughs> Even I have to sit in the no drinking zone every time. <laughs> drunk after just a few sips. Trust me, I can hold my liquor really well. <laughs> Venti, you can shapeshift. Just put some facial hair on. Just put like a fancy mustache. Oh, it's me! French Venti! Also, this fucking guy. <laughs> the sound of the ocean waves. Oh, he liked that. Right. Walk past that. Go on. I'll wait. Oh, I'm sorry. Is there an immovable object in your way? Oh my god. The sound of the ocean waves. Crumble. <laughs> okay. Fifty on the other. Actually, starts sounding like a spoiled child. Yeah. Okay, uh, so that's all the extra dialogue. What is this? Long time no see, Chrono Paimon. Have a lantern right? This is a lantern right quest. Thank you, Hu Xing. Uh, Paimon also wishes you well. Happy lantern right! We've seen that the Alcor has a lot of seaborne goods and decorations, and it's as bustling as it is in the city. Looking great, no? All the decorations were handpicked by the captain. She wanted her brothers and sisters on duty to feel like they were at home for the festival. Not only that, before the lantern ride, the captain gave each of us a bonus and organized several big feasts. The food for every feast is ordered from reputable restaurants, such as the Wanmin restaurant, which we always frequent, and Shunye kiosk in Liwe Pavilion. Yee. Everyone ate and drank their fill. Paimon wants to check on those too. Wow, bonus and a feast? That's great. Paimon had no idea that Beto also had such an eye for detail. Actually, the captain has always been meticulously keeping the fleet's affairs in orders. Not only do we crew members get paid very well, but during past lantern rites, she's also prepared gifts for our families. Before, the captain got some business information from the Ting Chuan on how to improve management, management strategy for the crux. The revenue of the fleet has soared, so the captain has also increased our pay, and this way, the crew will be tip-top shape for any challenge. Are you saying that when the ship makes money, the crew members make the, the money? Like, it, it just raises for everybody? It's not doesn't just all go to one person? Like, capital, capitalism? When the new recruits hear about how well the crew, you know, they'll be extra motivated. New recruits? Huh? During Lent, right? Shouldn't everyone be on vacation? You guys seem to be working overtime. Not like that. Don't worry. Captain has done all the research in advance. Some of the crew were given early leave, while others were given days off later on. Thus, everyone gets time off, and there will always be someone to man the Alcor. I was among the group that got earlier vacation time, and I came back to post to my post completely refreshed. I'm currently getting ready for my training examination, Vigilance at Sea. Vigilant what now? Is it a new challenge? Yep, you guessed it. During the past few years, the volume of seaborne trade in Liwa Harbor has been soaring, and many people have joined up as sailors. Taking to the high seas is a matter of patience, bravery, and perception. These are highly demanded qualities. Sailors have been well trained in order to navigate safely. 
In addition to obtaining the four major qualifications of the five minor qualifications, which total nine navigation-related qualifications stipulated by the Ministry of Civil Affairs, two years of maritime training and apprenticeship are also required. Nine qualifications and two year more years of training. Holy mackerel! That's so demanding. It's no big deal. After all, it's far better to undergo rigorous training and preparation for work than to go out to sea and encounter an impressive surprise and prepare. The Ministry of Civil Affairs organizes most of the training courses anyone with a passable knowledge of the sailing could coast by them. Those subjects are too difficult. I remember this lady talking my ear off before in a past stream. Of course, some ships will also have traveler traverse dangerous waters, which will hopefully give them some experience. Wait a minute, speaking of sailing, you two are pretty good with that wave rider, no? Do you want to guys give it a try? If you don't mind, I can give some feedback. Oh, Pylon sees how much the skill the crew needs to navigate the high seas. There's a bonus reward, too. If it's a win-win for us, let's give it a try. Such vigor. And I'll mark you guys down for vigilance at sea examination. Please do your best. Yeah, during Beto's hangout. Yeah. Multiplayer billowing waves mode and single player tranquil waters mode. You may obtain all rewards by completing challenges in either mode. Vigilance at sea has three stages. Before each challenge begins, a stage will be cho chosen randomly. I'll be able to use heavy cannon. Durability instead of HP. Hmm. What in the world do those symbols really mean? Okay. Oh, there's more. Oh boy. Uh, okay. Fine. So get coins, don't get hit. So that's this quest. I had a feeling. Good loud. It's a lot of primos. Uh, so yeah, I'll have to save these three or four quests for a uh, different stream. Because they're going to be mini-games, and if, if there's extra time left over, then I can always do them story quests, and if there's even more extra, extra time, there's still the new... Uh, area that's in Sumeru uh, that's now available. This whole chunk of map is now available to explore. Um, so that's stuff we can do. We have, uh, but I've been going for three hours, 40 minutes-ish. I'm going to stop now. We've done all the story of this event, but I'll do the mini games next time. I'll do Al Haytham's story quest next time. I'll do some exploring if there's any time after that. But uh, thanks for coming. Every thanks for watching. Its, it's nice that the, the no stream is running smoothly at 60 FPS. So that's pretty cool. Hopefully it uh, continues to do that. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.